got Teamfight Tactics and we are on the rise to Diamond. Uh, one of the things that we've been using is the flexibility of Echo. Echo is probably just the best unit in the set. It's probably something you want to buy every copy of that you ever see, not just because it's good for you and your team, almost definitely, but also because everybody else is trying to get it too. So uh, Echo, everything revolves around this champion. I'll show you why. So... Number one, Synergy, everyone knows about this one, right? You just have the super fans plus Echo, you end up pairing everything together, right? It just works perfectly. It gives you Spellweaver to go with the KDA units that go with this comp. It gives you Sentinel to go with Lilia. It gives you true damage to go with cannons that turns on their extra healing ability, extra stuns. And then you just have a really nice fit together. These four units are core. This is where everyone's base understanding went. Within the first couple of weeks, everyone was doing this. There's a couple different lines though. You can take this and extrapolate it out, build something like a Seraphine or an Ari plus these units and you get perfect synergies again. You get Bruiser and Mosher, you get Spellweaver, you get wonderful frontline and then you end up just sitting in the back with Ari whipping away at people. Early game you use Seraphine to help heal up your frontline. So there's a lot of different options that go with it but that one's been pretty explored. Let's get rid of those and start talking about Sentinels. Uh, there's two different options that we can go with a Sentinel lineup. All right, so Lilia, Basis, already seems good. We're always starting with Lilia and Echo, awesome units that can heal themselves. They will benefit a lot from the extra stats because they have that healing. If you go with a Sentinel frontline, all right, this is the important thing. 60 magic resist, this is for your team. It's doubled for the Sentinels. So we're talking a huge jump. When you go to six Sentinels, that's 120 armor and magic resist. So now with just a little bit of healing, these things become insanely hard to kill. So there's two different options that we can go with this plan. They're just super, super simple. Team comps that you can make every single time without relying on any five cost legendaries. Number one, Seraphine and Ari, all right? You get the KDA pairing right here. You get one of the best stats in the game. You get the 10% max health, ability power, and attack damage. This will help them with their shields. It'll help them with their defensive abilities. Uh, everybody gets a bigger shield here <clears throat> by having this extra AP except for except for Cassante. So uh, everyone benefits from having the KDA. And the Spellweaver, it gives them both of those bonuses. Then you have Seraphine, which actually does a very interesting job for this team, which is to heal them. All right, Seraphine is a support. She's a support-like carry. Uh, she's going to help the team with healing. You do end up very low damage with this comp, but you end up sustaining for a really long time, which means that you can go for some super capped Ari boards uh, where you can aim for something like Man Immune, or you can go for Tear plus Spear of Shojin and Crit, or you can go with Hextech Gunblade because healing stacks really well with the resistances like we saw. So this is one option. And then the one that I see more often <clears throat> that I have more success with actually like full carrying the game is going with Caitlyn as a carry and trying to roll Senna. One of the reasons that rolling Senna is great is because Rapid Fire, another supportive stat for your team, uh, just a very solid unit. She's good by herself. She's even capable of carrying or being an item holder. You can use her, buy some items that you're willing to put on five cost units later, or you can just buy the items that you're planning on putting on Caitlyn, although that's not the best because she's AP versus AD, uh, but you can go with some shifts. You can put like an early Rabidons on a Senna and then later transition it over to a Blitzcrank who ends up having a massive shield. Uh, and you can play with anyone to be your carries. I like Caitlyn for the burst because she's able to rip through frontline units, but you can also carry your Blitzcrank. Just stay level eight if you're the only person in the lobby building echo or blitzcrank which you shouldn't ever be the only person in your lobby building echo but you might be the only one building blitzcrank until recently right people have started to pick up on how good this unit actually is this is a totally capable uh unit the biggest stomp i've had to date on this entire set was a three-star blitzcrank it was better than my three-star zach better than three-star caitlin it was just unequivocally it just walked up headliner you walk up zap that guy's dead my shield he had 3,000 health and his shield was for 6,000, right? With AP items, you just, whew, it was insane. It was like Rabidons, Ionic Spark, and Titan's Resolve because you want that extra AP growth. He just walked by, zap dead, zap dead, zap dead with a shield that never went away. Just like massive. So there's a couple of options to go for this. Because it's so flexible, it makes it such a good, strong comp to go for. A lot of other compositions like Country or anything to do with Urgot, if if you're contested, then it's a race to nine units, and if you lose that race, you can't win. You like you you just have a weaker version of what they have. This is always flexible. You can always pick what to go into, and you have multiple different units that can carry, right? Blitzcrank can carry, Senna can carry, Caitlyn can carry, Echo can carry, or you can say, I ended up with two stars of everything. I'm win streaking in stage four. 
I'm just really confident with my board at 4-6 going into stage 5, and you say, okay, I don't really have extra units, everyone's kind of playing a little bit of everything, and I'm just going to stay this, okay, then that's the time that you go level 9, and then something like Ziggs becomes a fantastic carry. Absolutely you want something long range, uh, and be willing to ch trade out your... <clears throat> headliner for it uh the highest cap finisher that you could possibly get here would be like this with this plus this and then your ad item of choice uh usually you want the one that just has the amplified extra damage especially if you have any source of reducing armor anywhere else although sometimes you may need to get something like last whisper especially if your opponents are playing six sentinels and you need a way around it so speaking of this uh what are some answers for this team there's a couple different ones well We've seen the emergence of Moshers with Jax. Ionic Spark is actually one of the strongest items against that whole team because they're casting that spell. So you are punishing them for casting that spell. You can get some extra burn in on them. It's also decent against this team because it helps to reduce some of their magic resistance. Another thing you can do is to get away from their magic resistance, right? You can use burning effects that are going to deal true damage to get through them. Also, super, super important, if you're going to build any team that wants to rip through this front line, then you're going to need stuff like Giant Slayer. You're going to need things like Last Whisper. And you can have items like this that will help you to get through a front line if your opponents are building stuff like that. So anyways, there's a look at the board. This is the sort of team that we're going to build for. Again, highly flexible, a lot of different options. Uh, always trying to center around this, the good news probably the best thing about this composition is it's not so hard to just get a nice clean front like this right you can you can even have super fans to build into this you know the echo is super nice always looking and fighting for these echoes this is the one thing that you want to get above everything else it's worth rolling a little bit at six to get your echo three or your echo two i should say uh before other people do and you want to kind of show people your intent by sticking to that senna uh and early game types of Items that we're looking for, Spear of Shojin, good on Senna, totally fine by itself. Also very good on the Blitzcrank later is the Rabadon, so you can use that with anything. You can also do uh, one of the scaling items, like, uh, what's the one I'm thinking of? I actually don't even know the name of this item. I build it rarely. Where is it? Tier plus wand. There's Seraph's Embrace, of course. Seraph's Embrace gives you, gives you that extra AP uh, scaling for later. Totally fine on a Blitzcrank if you want to make him carry but generally you go with something like this plus red buff or giant slayer uh something like this is very just easy to build and and to play around red buff a lot of people don't realize you know the the big power in this is the plus eight percent damage right that's a huge thing same thing with rabidons not only are you getting all that ap but it gives you plus eight percent damage so this is where we're trying to get most of our start from Sunfire not mandatory. All right, you want to have the tankiest items on your best units. Your your especially your Echo and Mordekaiser. You can use AP a little bit more on Blitzcrank because its ratio is so good. Uh, but also tank stats are fine. I like Titan's Resolve because with six Sentinels, you're going to be surviving for a very long time in fights. So you'll get that full twenty five scaling, and then you actually get that extra help. Although I will say the extra stats, the resistances don't really matter because if you're already 120 deep here, it doesn't matter that you get an extra 25 elsewhere. But this is uh, something that we may lean into, something like Titan's Resolve here, and we might go with Ionic Spark and something like this, Rabidons. So this is a, an overview. This is what we're looking at. Hopefully we can build out some wins. We're pretty close. Uh, I don't know exactly how close. Well, tell me right here. Oh, does it tell me my rank? Maybe once I press play. All right, Emerald 257 LP. So I think this is attainable. We'll see if we can do it today. We're gonna play a handful of games and uh, wish me luck gonna make sure that the music is cranking music volume all the way up so you guys can hear the wonderful beats the one downside there's one thing i don't like about this set i love the music i love the composition i love that they took 12 musical outlets and turned them into one big symphony with gin wrapping it all together like it's so so cool right Unfortunately, to me, Heart Seal and True Damage are just kind of, um, you know, especially Heart Seal. So it's such like a grungy, like baseline that 
I don't like it to be my main theme. I like there to be a little bit more. Yeah. I wish I could play 8-bit all day long. Pentakill's great. I like emo. Uh, I think I think there's a lot of avenue to try to make, make things work with the music you like. I've considered becoming an 8-bit one trick. I kind of got turned off to it because I tried to do it last patch when 8-bit was just really, really weak. But uh, if all things work out well, hopefully we'll get some 8-bit music with our games today. Some of the runes that will be best for us. Um, let me see if I can find a list. I don't see the aug augments, augments. That's old. The general concepts is extra stats. Extra health will be good because it will already scale with what we're doing. You know what? Let's just go with a nice consistent game here. It's rampant. The burning effects are good. Sources of extra damage, extra AP especially. Very good for that sent sentinel frontline. Uh, combat caster where you get an extra shield because that shield is scaling with your extra 120 resistances so uh, combat caster is very nice combat caster also lets us go into our second favorite composition which is EDM because uh, combat caster is broken on that team if you haven't played it before you basically live with a permanent shield on your units uh, especially when you put the caster on your like your jacks or your zed with a low cooldown was it four or five seconds and they're basically just casting their own spell and every five seconds casting that spell so they're just permanently shielded. Sometimes you can get an idea of where people are thinking, especially if they get three cost units. So we already have double edgelord here. That's insane. Have an idea of what they're going for. Ooh, all right. This is kind of what we're looking for. And uh, other, ooh, collector. This would let us go into Samira comps, but we're not really there. Zonia's Paradox, not really good for our frontliners. Omnivamp, much better on Moshers. Let's go with this. We'll try to get some crit going. I would see, normally, I would see Collector, and I would build Samira, and just not even think twice about it. Um, some of the ways to build this out, you can go with early Corky, and you can go big shot with Kaisa. Uh, you can go with KDA and 8-bit, try to stack up that early 8-bit. You can try to go for a couple different avenues. Let's see what we get. I like popping. Ooh, whoops, this needs to be out here early. That's my mistake. You want to get... Artifact anvils are a little bit different than other items. Normally component carousels and whatnot, or the extra anvils, you want to hold on to because you want to make better information. But these have a chance of giving you gold, right? And that's a big deal. Uh, tons of stats, fantastic for this team composition. Not too many threes to work with. We're basically getting... Uh, we could turn this into a gold. Not gonna go here. It's not better. Combat caster, we were talking about this. So getting... Hmm. This is better for the carries. This is better for defense. We've got a collector, so I'm gonna play more defense. All right, we talked about the different items. We said that we could probably slam something like a <clears throat> Spear of Shojin or Redemption. I'm gonna go with Redemption because we don't always need Spear of Shojin. Sometimes we're building out those Caitlyn items instead and keeping the BF sword means that we're still flexible there. I'm gonna give this here. Our team's strong enough to compete, to kill units. Playing against a Triforce, uh, Yasuo is probably an L. Whether or not she gets this cast off first will make the difference. I'm totally fine lost streaking. 
I may actually sell this Lillian now to make sure that we keep our loss streak. Or we could just go with three two stars and actually play for play for some wins. We buy this. We can actually still sell. If we win this, we can still go get up to 10 gold. We got options here. This will help us focus fire a little bit better. This is actually very good for us that everyone spiked. No, we had a couple people stay at three. Never mind. We've got an Annie carry. Already has six Annies, so we're definitely going to want to play defense against that. If we win this round, we sell out these units. I think we're going to win pretty easily. Our units basically just don't take damage here. And it's probably just in time, just as well, because at level four, very hard for us to lose. Now that we have three two stars, we're gonna have a pretty cap, a pretty strong board here. Ooh, speaking of strong boards, uh, KDA doing nothing for us yet, although we could. We could also just sell this and pick up the Senna, and now we're in just really chilling phase. Can put the redemption here since we're more likely to sell it out. The AD, we don't get as much bonus here from the Senna, but still the crit might go with a um, jeweled gauntlet at some point. This also makes our intentions clear, right? Once we show that we have a rapid fire Senna, it makes it much easier for us to kind of hold our ground. Here's the Samira player, collector with Infinity Edge. Look how hard it is to kill this unit, guys. Get collected. Now we could hedge our bets a little bit. We've already got this uh, extra cannon, so let's do like this. I don't think there's a world where I swap this out. I think we've got the Senna, so, so I should probably just stop. Um, one of the things you can do with this team, looking at the Sentinels, you get the Garen, and then you also have the Senna, right? So you actually have a two cost like reroll that you can go for, and you also have a couple ones and threes that you can hit. All right, I should have brought that, you know what? It was a mistake to sell the cannon because I could have replaced the cannon and given Spear of Shojin here. True damage bonus, minus 15, makes uh, Spear of Shojin that much better. It also makes just having one tier on her much better. So she'll be casting after three autos. She's got the rapid fire bonus, which is the better one when you already have one of your true damage units, <clears throat> whichever one it is. Um, you don't want to overcap on true damage. It doesn't give you anything extra. So rapid fire will be totally got, uh, fine to get through the game. It also means that once we do find our Caitlyn, we're definitely selling this and moving the items over. So uh, I want to be constantly thinking about what unit, what am I actually building for? What items am I really building? You know, Spear of Shojin, it's fine on Caitlyn. It's, it's capped on Jin. Uh, there's a lot of things that are very strong about everything that I want to put together, uh, but we really have to make that choice every, with every iteration. All right, it was good that we got those double kills. That was a tough board. Level five, two lesser champion duplicators. So he used them both to go win streak. Yeah, all right, good play. Early heart steal to go win streak. This is a fantastic plan with heart steal, by the way. A lot of people think that you should lost streak with heart steal. That is not true. You should win streak with Heart Steel 3 because the prizes aren't that good. It's Heart Steel 5 and Heart Steel 7 where you can lost streak and feel good about it. Trying to align all of our damage as best as possible. I want Lilia surrounded by units so she can get the spell off for maximum effect, but you know, we might not get that. No big deal. It is really tempting to buy this Ken and replace this, especially since we had some level five boards that we were gonna be fighting against, since we're econing up right here. Uh, and <clears throat> playing for it. But having, you know, having this moderate size board, totally fine. But getting that Spear of Shojin over, right? 
there's an argument for making that. Maybe it was just right too. So I'm definitely, oh, didn't need to sell that. Definitely buying the replacement cannon so that I can get ready to make that play. In case it takes a while for the all-star himself to show up. Let's see how many echoes. We have one echo, two echoes already here. They were level five, so that they, ha they did have ch better chances of hitting these units. We see a lot of hard steel coming out. We see, which one is this? Oh, it's just CDM, it's not a headliner. Normally this would be a stage if you had a, a level one headliner and you didn't really have good synergies, you'd sell it. Now we have the two rapid fires. One of the other things that we didn't talk about is getting an early heart steel Cassante, and you can use heart steel plus a Felios plus Senna to level up, and then you can use a Felios to hold all the Caitlyn items. Um, we don't need to do that since we're here, and we already have a rapid fire emblem, so we could go extra heart steel. It is stage two. You know what? We're gonna do it. Wait. Oh my gosh, I put in the wrong unit. I mm, mm, slipped it up a little bit. Okay, it is what it is. We're gonna let Set be an R item borrower. This is another one of the best items you can make. I actually should have slammed that item so that I'd get the bonus right here. I don't know that I'm gonna win this fight. It's gonna be close. This Kale is not empowered yet. I have two items on my Senna, so I should be okay. But it was close. That was a huge mistake. At least we'll still get it in in time for this. Ooh, Twin Tower. Oh, get three sparring gloves. Well, we did say that crit was something we were looking at here. I may change my plan and not go for Crown Guard. Instead, we can go Lucky Gloves and then actually itemize Senna and... Yeah, we're gonna do that. We're gonna do this to itemize our Senna and Caitlyn. All right, this goes here, and now we have our Caitlyn items, which are going to be perfect. And we have our Jeweled Gauntlet to go with the Collector. So now we're at 90% crit chance, 140% crit damage. Do we want to spike a little bit here? Mm, no, we're going to Econ. We're on a two win streak, so I'd be, I'd be down for selling this, going to 40 gold putting an extra unit in play, especially since, yeah, you know what, I should have done it. Especially hitting level six, you know, we're getting extra chances at Echoes as well. It would have cost me one gold, but it would have made my chances at wind streaking much, much higher. Uh, but I should be good enough. Sonya's Paradox, the best Jax item in the game. We're gonna leave these units in the pool because I think it's going to hit our opponents harder than it's gonna hit us. What is this guy doing? Super fan, he's already got eight Seraphines. <clears throat> Garen out here. The reason we want Garen in the back, we don't necessarily want him to take the early damage. We want him to build and stack up, so we want him to get a cast off before he gets aggroed. Now right, let's take a peek what other people are doing. Gifts from the Fallen, this is very, very standard, just like using the bots for um, stats. Stars are born in Jeweled Gauntlet. Inch. Ooh, wow. He hit the EDM jacks too. So that guy's super capped. That guy's gonna have a really good endgame board. <clears throat> so we may need something special. Our board's gonna be really good. Like this team's just really, really solid. We can also just put in an extra rapid fire as we level up. The um 8-bit synergy is something I didn't talk about, but getting, well, apart from the music, having that Caitlyn come into play and having the 8-bit bonus is solid. One of the things I do sometimes is go Kaisa plus Quirky. The 
This you can't leave this up. This is a true damage Zed. Dwarlock, who got it? The Jax player got it. Jesus Christ. Okay. I'm gonna do this. I don't always do it. And I don't have any spare pieces right now. I've got the one for Pentacle, but we're not really in Pentacle, so not sure what the spatula is gonna be yet. Uh EDM Jax 3 and Spat Z on 3 5. Easy first. Kind of put a little pressure on him. Doesn't that doesn't uh, look like that's what I'm doing, but what I'm trying to do is put some pressure on him. We have these early echoes. I'm tempted to fight for some more echoes here. I also have this heart steel unit. <clears throat> If we level, we have better chances at Ezreal, and then we have better windows where we might lose and be okay with it. This actually... This corner on the Aphelios, yes, I want it to be targeted by... Akali's, but Akali's don't show up yet, right? So there's no real reason to corner yet. The thing that you do want is you want Senna in the middle of the board so that it hits triple, triple units more often. I think I have to hate draft this. I think we can start moving our units a little bit as well. He's going Masha, that's good for us. But Set, Set and Zack is the big combination that he's looking for. You can also go with Urgot. You can go Country. Very easy to go Tom Kench, Katarina, Urgot. What do we think? Let me know. What do you think this game's headed for? Hashtag strat chat. This is a bad loss. These level seven boards are spiking. So we need to get stronger than them. We're aiming for a level eight board. We're gonna replace this Senna, build out Caitlyn. It doesn't look like anyone's headed for a Caitlyn board, but we got a, we got some problems with uh, Yasuo's Yone's and Jax is already coming online. We can also go one more round. And just put this in play if we get the Ezreal. Emo is not really that good. Pentakill, true damage. True damage is where you want it. 8 bit is an option, especially if we get an 8 bit Caitlyn. Uh, we could also get a true damage Echo. And if we get a true damage Echo, then we're in a good spot to use that emblem well. Pick up the Sentinel. We don't have the unit yet, so we'll go for four Sentinel. Start pushing out this front line a little bit. Lilia, you never want on the left side right here because a unit will never wrap around it. You want units right here that will wrap around her so she gets a slightly better pull off. Same thing with with <clears throat> Mordekaiser, and right now he's my just my better unit, so I'm happy to take him. All right, defensive stats. We have the 8-bit spatula. So I'm not going to slam things because Jazz could be useful. We could go with with a... We could actually keep this Rapid Fire. Grab Caitlyn and Lucian. So we're kind of farming a little bit still. We've got enough HP to farm a bit more with the Heart Steel. It's kind of scary based on how strong these boards are and the fact that we just got a Prismatic. So it's kind of risky. I don't think we're doing the reroll thing. This can be very good because you make your you make your bookends just insanely strong. Um, the support item, hmm, you know, I might actually want that. Gain of blacksmith's gloves. Not, it's not going to synergize the way I need it to. I'm going to go with the support item and the two champions. Let's see if we hit the blitzcranks or the Caitlyns. No, neither. 
we're just selling this. We're econing. Do we just econ right here? Okay, this is actually feeding towards the Jazz Lucian strategy. We actually have enough gold to hit here. I'm glad I leveled here. This is a good way to preserve some HP even though we're a little bit weaker still. No collector procs is kind of a bummer though. All right, 44 HP. We're looking okay. We're looking okay. I'm starting to think that this rapid fire is something we're going to hold on to. We're going to keep this itemization. We're going to start thinking about Lucian. There's the Caitlyn. Caitlyn can do this, but we want one more cash out. <clears throat> so if we find Ezreal, we could just put Ezreal in play. I don't think our cash out is going to be that big anyways. Maybe we just take it for what it is. That is a tough one. We could also just put this in. Do it like that. Keep the keep the heart steel. I forgot a step. That yaks. Perfect items. What does he have for runes? Jeweled Lotus, that's a problem. Cybernetic Bulk for the front line, keep everybody alive. That's going to be a problem. I think we're a level nine team. I think we want this Lucian. I think we want to hit Blitzcranks. The question is whether or not we want to sell the Senna. I guess I just got rid of the backup, which is, which is not a good idea. Jazz Emblem. Oh my goodness, we might get it. No, he's gonna take it. Wrong side of the board. All right, what do we want? Giant Slayer. I'm not sure that Giant Slayer is better than Last Whisper here. Last Whisper might just be better. He already has that effect though. Maybe Red Buff was even better. All right, do we rebuild here? We're one away from the cash out. We don't need any other help to get there. We can survive to stage five and, and do our reroll here. We've got the backup Senna. We still haven't found an Echo, guys. We, so we said Echo is the most important unit in the game and we have none. I got this guy to sell Luxes, so that's good. All right, are we almost definitely doing Jazz? I guess there's still a world where we might go 8-bit, but probably not. I think Jazz is going to give us the much better board. So I think we're going to want that on a, on a defensive unit. We're also still... Yeah, again, we haven't found Blitzcrank or Echo. Going 9 is going to reduce our gold chances of getting there, but it will give ourselves better odds. And if you're 9, then I almost definitely want to replace this Senna and go for a, a higher capped finish. We're going for a first place. Losing 12 HP. I've got two, I've got two lives left. It's gonna be close. These boards are strong. I think I need to put gold onto these units. All right, there's my cash out. Do I do it now? There's no way doing it now is right, is there? There's no way that that's right now. We're going to sell you. Where did we get even shroud from? Oh, from the cash out. Okay. Jazz, jazz, jazz. I'm overloaded on these. Oh, this is a mistake. You guys can do this better. I am not strong enough here. I'm taking way too much. I mean, either way, I was going to be at one HP, but, uh, but yeah, I took a lot. We do have a true damage emblem, so that might open up some portals right here. So we're definitely going nine. If we get, if we luck into like a Kiana, 
or something, then we might go the true damage emblem. Alright, let's get rid of this. Let's sell this. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, we're so stacked that we can't even fit those. Um, there's no one that I want to put these things on. I don't know that we even beat this guy, that, that we beat this board. I had to put this in. I'm not sure that we would have beaten the Raptors. We're not going to be able to pick up any of the bobbles either, so this is going to be a complicated roll. God, look how close this fight was. The one bobble I'll be able to pick up is the one with the uh, thing on it. Oh, we got this. Okay, beautiful. That takes a lot of stress out of things. Uh, let's give her the items, at least a couple items. Yikes, we are so weak. Okay. We are so weak, we punted our rotation. Don't do this. Don't be like us, folks. Mm, I made it too complicated. A little bit of a low roll early, but could have played for six sentinels. Never saw the echo. Maybe that's the way the, the life is. You don't hit echo, you finish eighth. Yikes. Not a good start. I needed to play faster paced, right? These guys got too strong too quick. I needed to play a faster board. Alright, so I think we need, we might not even get there with a win in two seconds because I think my last win got me 39 points. So if we want to get up a rank right here, it's going to have to be 1-1-2, one, one, but we'll just fo focus on wins. That is something that should not happen to us with that board. It should be too easy to build out. We made it a little bit too complicated. One star everything, right? Like... Too much, too much fishing. Check this out. All right, this is sacrifice. This is pinned, so I can't go. That means that this is probably near checkmate. No, this forces the knight to take it, and then we go here. What a win. Unit Accelerator is really bad for this comp. Recombobulator can be pretty good. We're going to aim for recombobulations. Spike. Remind us to spike at 3-1. And at 4 1. Man, that guy hit Jax out of nowhere. I scouted him, and then less than a stage later, he was just on a he was on a natural Jax too. By the way, something people don't realize. If you want to high roll, you don't get your headliner first. If you know what you're going for and it's uncontested, you don't necessarily just grab the first jacks you see, mathematically speaking. You're better off keeping more jacks in the pool, pull, 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 and then once you have four or five, then you grab your headliner. Makes it much, much easier to hit. Uh, this is totally reasonable.
Man, also by not playing aggressively, I also lost out on so many opportunities. This is another team that's very good, by the way. Good to block units. Might be just being a two-cost reroll meta, right? Senna, Senna, Echo are being contested. Kale is a totally competent carry. Jax is a totally competent carry. This is like the best early game unit, right? Hyper Pop's just un unmatched in strength. The stats are not as good for us as they could be for other people, but do we spike at all, play singular unit here? Guardian, Guardian. Couple of people are building tiny titans, which is great, which means we can win streak and still be first on carousel. Aye. This should be this should be a pretty easy win streak. We are looking very, very strong. So what are we looking for? The super fans, obviously. If we get, if we luck into an early Nico, we'll be in fantastic shape. Grab the Lilia. We'll have KDA. Oh, we get the Echo. Beautiful. True damage and Sentinel. Do we ship out any of these things? I should probably actually move this into the corner so that the Eve, the Eve gets a little bit gummed up. This is what I don't want. It's two target, two people targeting her. Hey, although early game, honestly, with the extra stats from Sentinel and the fact that she's healing on hit, it's actually not that bad, right? And you get the extra support from the people around. So it's like, it's okay. I'd much rather that hit be on a Guardian though. But I, I can't just put her in the front. I can't put like the Guardians in front because I've got this unified resistance but we're still strong we're still very very strong if i had enough i would pre-level here we already have we already have no extra copies of our units we absolutely would want to be in that spot i could level right now An extra guardian i think that's it so if we level right now, four, four, everybody's going to be four. No one hit five, right? We're still pretty strong, but I do want to guarantee this win. True damage, you bugging out? Yeah, let's listen to some 8-bit. Music's going haywire. Bugged. Why is the music bugging? Four Sentinels. We have we have competition. This guy has an extra unit. Man, we might have to chill the music. That's too bad.
Kind of try to give Senna some better carrying items here. Yeah, you know what? Last game, I, I should have had everything turned up a notch because of the board we were on. Okay. We easily could sell this because we've got an extra Guardian. We could go for the Gnar 2. Or we could just Econ. If we go Nar 2, what are we replacing Sentinel here? We're going for the win streaks, folks. We're trying to guarantee these win streaks against these other fives. Alright, I guess we'll just have to play something else. Why pay for internet with slow roam? No, I don't want it. Fiber gives you don't want it. All right, I don't know if I'll be able to do that. <sighs> no other super fan is kind of weird. Found our nemesis, the Seraphine. We can't heal our way through it. So luckily, the Sunfire might just be enough. And the fact that we have a uh, two star here might be enough. It's going to be really close. Yeah, boom, we got it. Highlighter versus not. Hey. Okay, so there's actually an avenue that you can go with these units. This will give us the option of picking up like a Seraphine. Oh, we said we want to spike, right? We absolutely want to spike here. It's almost worth pre-leveling. It is worth pre-leveling. It's just one gold for a better shop on our on our dude. We're taking it. It's tempting doing it country and crowd diver said I'm spiking oh my goodness do we actually pivot do we pivot do we pivot do we pivot let's pivot let's have some fun with this I don't have true damage. I don't have cannon. Could have put this in. We have the EDM. I, I kind of just want to put on the show with the EDM units, you know? All right. You need to turn off. Six. We have ten. Is it worth shipping out all ten? No, it's not even ten. Who do we get to keep? Keep the cannon. Need to get my econ back up. Oh, recombobulator. Okay. Uh, yes. Yes. 100% yes. I'll just take it now so we have more time to think. We hit Ari. Okay, we can, we're can. we back on the Sentinel, on the Sentinel wagon. Whew. 
big, big front line. Look at this front line that we drew up very, very naturally. Oh, that's wonderful. True damage and guardian. Where's the other true damage? Still thinks Echo is on my board. All right, whole game is bugged. That sucks. Might mean that we have to change games after this. Uh, all right, so a lot of options here. The fact that we got the Ari means that we'll just probably go for this Ari Sentinel build. With Seraphine, the Sentinels. We'll look at this Zack for a little bit, though. Like, Zack with Sunfire is so good. You Zack with Sunfire and Ionic is how you want to build the EDM team. But it looks like we have someone else with EDM, and somehow we lost? Okay. We lost after recombobulating to another level 6 guy who doesn't even have a rune here. 6 Mosher. Okay, yeah, we just didn't have the damage to beat through 6 Mosher. Okay, makes, makes sense. Alright, let's get some music. Oh. YouTube has ads now. The best presence of the I guess we'll just have to uh, like accept the ad for a moment. I also have this stacked data. up wrong because I have the unified units and I don't have three people on my back line. I'm gonna have to pull all my units out and then put them back in so that I get this uh, actual actually correct. Actually perfect. Despite two people on Tiniest Titans, we're still struggling here. Maybe I should have gone the tier here. Nah, no, I, I've got the spear, I'm good. Yeah, see, look, it still thinks I have an echo in play. This game is buggy AF right now. Bruiser, Mosher. We've got Bruiser. We've got Mosher. I actually could have picked this up. Heart Steel and just try to farm. She didn't one-shot the Yasuo, wow. That is such bad news. Ah, I didn't expect to uh, lose, lose twice after recombobulating. But yeah, Tiniest Titans, man, I hate that. If you get it third, that's fine. Getting it first, though, it just makes you worse on the carousel. It makes you lose a stack. You basically have to Lost Streak to get any value out of it. Alright, we're okay. A loss here is actually better for us than a win gold-wise by one. It's a small difference. I'd say you don't actually ever want that to be a loss, but you accept it if it comes. Maybe Blitzcrank should have come back. Set should be on the edge as well, so he's more likely to take more of the hits. I want Thresh to get his spell off. I'd rather have the Zack live for longer, so my positioning's completely awful here. Uh, 
All right, win, preserve HP. Winning's better. Also, winning gives me a better chance at win streaking, so it's just better. I'll just pick these up. Uh, okay, this is the unit we were looking for. Not really the unit we're looking for. Maybe since we're going eight, we don't actually want her, but... This is one of the units. Poppy is one of the units that benefits most from the Sentinel trait as well, so we'll, we'll hold on to her for a moment. Okay. So we get tier to go along with it, but that's not actually best here. All right, we said we're gonna spike again. Didn't I have a Lulu here? cast I'm not positive that I don't want stat something like static shift here but there's a lot of options that would give us reduction later should be strong enough for a win here <clears throat> also could have gone could have easily just put this on and made an adaptive helm for the front line which is a fantastic item that gives offense and defense one of the best items on the patch very underrated all right, we have burning. We have a couple of vampirisms. We're looking at, we might have some longer fights. I'm not positive I want to keep her, but you know what? For stage four, she'll be totally fine. We just need another spell weaver and start building out this uh, sentinel line. This is fantastic. The extra item plus the extra shield is fantastic. This is very good value. This is one of the best values you can get here. Like one random component compared to a component and seven gold. Which five would we be looking for? I don't know that we actually just want a five here. Maybe we do. At worst, it's seven gold. All right, we're gonna go here. I should have re-rolled the other one to see. Oh, we got Jin. Okay. Well, we've got Jin with Potential for for blue buff. Double spear of Shojin is an option. We've got we've got options here. Do I want Giant Slayer? I think I do want Giant Slayer here. Strong spike. That's actually a spell weaver and a bruiser. We could easily put that in. Replace the Zack and make our team much stronger. Alright, that is a Jin. That is not a headliner gin, but that is a gin. I'm going to go here. Since it's the most likely that we get some more value off of that, we could also go here. We could also go Adaptive Helm for this. It's another... Thing that you can go for gin items every three seconds you get that extra 10 mana so basically he goes attack 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 spell so it basically turns him into a four attack champion which is totally fine for casting that spell blue buff spear of shojin are definitely like the better options but it's not awful you know what we're going to do is put this item right here because we can I don't know that I'm going to be doing anything with these things. I don't know that we ever have an option of beating this three-star Gnar. Well, we did say that, that Jin was an option, right? Jin plus six Sentinel, absolutely an option. have very good items for him. Alright. 
This is actually a really tough choice. All right, we're gonna go with blue buff. Blue buff is good now, here, and it will also be good later on the gin if that's the uh, avenue that we go down. True damage, spell wheel. Unfortunately, this is the worst. The worst one here. Is it worth ever going out of this? K we don't even have KDA right now, which is kind of crazy. Just put him out here. Doesn't really cost us anything. We'll go blue buffs. Now we have blue buff, Spear of Shojin, and Giant Slayer. So we have completely fine items. It's not it's not a true damage emblem. So it's not perfect items, but it's dang near close enough. We can get rid of this, get rid of this. We can get rid of this. The guy already hit his three-star Narn. We're not gonna hit super fans now. We could also just recombobulate these items. And stick them on. That that fight could have been uh could have been solved if we just didn't punt people away. All right, Mosher Bruiser. We can start working this out. So we can go Sentinel and then just actually give this items to Blitzcrank. We still don't have KDA. Still crazy. This this unit's not that good without the extra big shot. And level, rank one just doesn't really do anything at all. I think we're gonna have to farm for a new for a new carry here. Level eight, we can go we can go for fours. Might find like an Ezreal. Might find this as a headliner. How many people are actually going Ari? We've got one Ari here. There's two as of three Ezreal, four Ezreals. Four Ezreals and Echoes that we're still missing Echoes. Uh you know what we have we just have to roll because we haven't found Echoes yet. We're still missing so much of our Sentinel front line. We might not even get the ones. You know what? We probably actually have to skip. I have to pivot. I have to go nine, and I have to go for the traditional, uh, the traditional front line that everyone got in the beginning of the of this set. KDA big shot. This is actually perfect. This is kind of inting. Well, health would be best. All right, we go here, we go like this, we go like this and like, nope, we missed it. I think we're gonna have to ship the board that we wanted. We're not gonna go Sentinels. We're gonna go with the traditional front line. Oh gosh, stressful. I think I may have screwed things up a little bit. There, boom, paid off. Who are we, who are we shipping for this? We have a guardian as well. Would we not need? Don't really need. Eh, yeah, we don't need this. She's not very good without the items. I don't know. Maybe I don't even need this. I also need to create a better structure that's going to keep Jin safer for longer. Ooh, 
this is going to be tough. This is going to be very, very tough. I think I've screwed up my transitions again, which, you know, that's why I'm done where I'm at. Speed and clarity of thought. Yikes. We'd love to get Poppy. Poppy would turn on emo and, and thing for us. Ari is completely inconsequential. Maybe Ari should just be this Zed as well. Should also have them closer to the to the Jin. This Yorick is melting. Oh, I didn't itemize my Yorick. I'm an I'm an idiot. Alright, I need to stop stop playing with Jin. Jin's no good unless you headline him. Yikes, can I escape from this? I may have, like walked myself into a into a bad team. She actually has okay AP ratio, so does the You are not doing anything for me, lady. Maybe if I found a Sona, and then Sona could help to play defense, but... Alright, Poppy. We want Poppy. I don't know that I need any of the other units. Okay. I should probably put York on the back so that he can just edge his way up. I have a problem though. This is a nine melee team, so, <laughs> so uh, we got we've got a problem here. Jin would so this is where I would want Jin. I'm just gonna lose. Maybe this guy's big enough with his uh, 25 stacks, and now that he's itemized. Four Mosher, no Pentakill, that's fine. Guardian's okay at three. We've got emo Guardian synergy. We got we got some we got some work to do, folks. All right, let's keep this here. I don't want him in back. I want him casting right away, and I want him moshing his way back up to full health. Right, so we won't, we've got our Moshers on the side. Sentinel is very lazy for me right now. I could easily just rebuild into this go this guy sentinel's not actually doing much although you know sentinel is a great great synergy to have right just giving everyone that extra stat does get outscaled i don't have kiana near the front nor does she have immediate access poppy's rank one we got we still got big problems folks we got big problems but we have that classic that classic Yorick front line. We just need a Lowy, I suppose. We are nine. We could be strong enough. The Sentinel true damage. I mean, we're getting just enough out of our, our Blitzcrank and Echo to pair the team. We're not going for four. We don't have a true damage emblem, so we're not really playing this. We got to outlast them. We have room for a super, super strong team, but it's not here yet. Maybe if everyone forgets that Yorick exists, maybe I can go for three-star Yorick. I don't think there's ever a world where we're getting this extra Guardian in play, nor do I really want it. I think the emo echo, uh, you know what, the, this guy should be right here. This emo Amumu, probably not, not good enough. I could go with Vex to go with Akali, and then that would give me another ranged unit. 
could also go with Pentakill Executioner and then make room for the Akali that way as well. Vex should be in play, right? Vex, yeah, Vex I need to find room for. It's too late, I'm just dead. I, I can't just be at one. I've got to be dead. What? Okay, apparently we're at one. Was I at six? Yeah, I, I guess I was high enough. What was I at, 12? Eight plus two? All right, maybe, maybe that was, right? Vex, 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 Vex. Pentakill, true damage. We want the true damage, we want this. Pentakill, we've got bonuses from here. We don't have the Alawi. This is the only other place to pull synergies from. Playing for the crowd divers, I could go for something more classical here. Get rid of Kiana. Kiana's not even getting the true damage bling anymore, so I could get rid of. I could get rid of Kiana and Zed. Instead, play Alawi. Yeah, you know what? That might just be better. Any ranged character here? Second Karthus? Second, no way, second Karthus is right. Okay, this is where we'll, we'll live with it. This Karthus is definitely wrong, way out of place. Didn't get the spell off, GG. Oh, we punted that away. <clears throat> There's Kale that I was talking you about. People doubt this. Let's watch this Kale for a bit. This guy's in for, I mean, look at, we were actually pretty close. So all things told could have been worse. We definitely punted away. All it takes was two more wins and we could have finished top two. We could actually, two more wins, we could have finished top one. Like what if we came here and just double killed? So I guess that'd be three more wins. This guy went with true damage ed edgelord. He didn't get true damage on here. This is kind of bizarre. I mean, he went for a reroll team. Tank items on Kane. You really want, you want heal on Kane. Sentinel, Katie, there's n this isn't- oh, he's got super fans still, okay. Super fan making the Yasuo tankier. Okay, he's playing left to right. This- that makes sense. You play left to right so that the, um, Kale can rip through everyone on the other side, but you'd really want to stack your damage here to make sure that you win this 1v1. The AoE is gonna be nice. Riven's gonna do really good work there. As expected, that was actually a- that was a, a positioning punt. He just walked himself into the AoE of the Riven. This guy got the Maestro. No, he didn't. He got Big Shot here.
traditional jazz board this is what we we're talking about by the way this four stack lineup just gives you six units to kind of build up at this stage in the game frankly you should put your aphelios up like here so that it takes a little bit of the aggro takes a little bit of the hits you can even play against this uh, against this riven there's a little trick you can do you can actually stick your units in front of the riven like right here so that she won't dash through right and she kind of gets stuck on that on that guy right if you put two units right here so misfortune you could put a Felios misfortune there they won't take the damage it'll stop the pass through and it'll kind of hold on to that line for longer plus it'll make them be the ones that take the damage rather than your back line right you don't you don't need misfortune and an Aphelios. they're not actually contributing to the total amount of damage there now uh, look at that guy he called it positioning diff all right, I don't think we can play any more of this mode because the music being bugged is too triggering for me. Happy winter, by the way. Oh, unfortunate, demoted. Alright, the music is bugged. Happy winter. How about stumbling through Emerald? This is basically going to give us jungle over AD carry over support, but we have we have pretty simple changes or simple odds of getting those. It's probably like 50-30-10. Probably even closer than that. It's probably honestly it's like 40-30-30. Alright, you know what? We're gonna play some Kane today. We just did a class on Kane. This is not one of the champions that we're particularly great at, but we there are some things that we picked up while coaching, while learning about coaching. We picked up on Kane. Uh, almost definitely want to go red Kane because we've got a Senna on our team, so we just want to hold down the line for longer. We want to block things that can one shot, that can hold us down, that can keep us at range, slow us, burn us. Has a spell shield. Malzahar seems like one of the best things in the game against Kane. I'm happy to pick first for this guy as well. Actually, this guy picking Brand uh, would obfuscate my jungle pick because Brand has been playing much, much more in the jungle recently. All right, that's gone. Do we just go Nocturne and try to um, power farm? We already have the AP. We might be low on stats. They lock in Kiana. That's fantastic for us. usually going to be like this. Mumu Timo, that's probably enough reason to go Tenacity. What I want to find out is whether or not my team needs me to be beefier, in which case I'll go Conqueror, or whether or not they want me to be an Assassin. Or they just dodge.
anytime you want to ban <clears throat> something that's a less common pick, someone that, you know, they wouldn't feel the need to hover, it's always a good idea to just hover the ban. Don't just snap it down. Hover it for a bit, give them 10 seconds to, to give you a response. Be like, oh, no, I'm a Malzahar player. You know, you, most one-tricks, especially, would hover the champion that they're one-tricking. Uh, that's something that you should absolutely do in solo queue. But if it's less picked and it's something that's kind of, you know, if they're a two or three trick, they might have Malzahar in their pool. We don't have a skin. Should we do it? Oh, we don't have enough right now. That's right, we just got the pass. All right, we'll be base skin, no big deal. All right, we've got an Ash, supportive supportive champion. They've got the Nocturne, which means I probably want to be red already. Uh, Blue Cane also gets countered by Janna, also singular hits from York. Although, if it is a Lethality York, then Blue Cane completely crushes that. You just one-shot him. There's very little counterplay for him. You know, we're never wrong doing this. I gotta use the bathroom. Oops, sorry about that. Foul, by the way. If you're out there trying to climb, not something you want to be doing. Hmm. All right, we ended up with way. We've got plenty of control on our team. So actually doubling down on the control might not be awful. This will give us the most differences. And my pick, get the Rick. Get ready to get rolled, Rick. Get ready to get rolled. Gonna save my Q until I need it. Once I see that I'm past this spot though, then we can Q get a little bit further. Generally, you want to have that on cooldown ready for yourself. Wards tend to be better in this environment. If they ward here, by the way, they won't see this corner, so you can always go this angle. You see that joke right there. All right, so we're going to get some early information. Let's turn off the music. So yeah, absolutely don't want to be giving away that information for free. Uh, want to be scouting in that time already. Minus. Pre-game, minus. Slightly late into the map, minus.
All right, looks like they're leashing from bot side. Slightly obnoxious on my placing here. It means I'm a little bit late for this. So let's see, they're probably here. One, two, one, two. One click here, path through, straight lines to make sure you make it in. Get right in his belly so you can queue against the wall <clears throat> improve your clear speed significantly right now we can do this one we're going to get him down to this much health we can go over here get into his belly and one more hit just a good measure if our timing were slightly better that burn actually would have still been ticking we would have been completely okay to uh not do that trick And we are out. 327, not so bad. Could be better. I want to queue through it on this direction so we can go back. I see my bot lane's already pushing them out. They're getting their recall in, so I don't need to hover anything. I'm going to keep doing this path here. Now I'm going to get my... If I didn't place a ward, I could get a ward down here. But what we will do is just path straight through here and help this guy push out. All right, we'll just help this guy push. Slow the Nocturne down a little bit. Unfortunate, that guy went way too far forward. So now we just have to clean this up. <clears throat> He's got the teleport, so just by killing just a couple minions, we make it so he doesn't feel it as much. But we do get our respawn here. Could have used Smite, we'll save it right here. Should have used Smite to pull him out. <clears throat> you know what? Just gonna kill this camp. He's looking right here. We need to get our items though. We've got too much of a spike. What do we say? Against this team, assassins are probably really good. Blue form. So this little shop will give us a little time for the wolves to respawn. <clears throat> and that kind of just builds in naturally. So you see what happens when you go one, two into this side clear. Then you get a very natural progression. Missed an auto. Missed my Q against that wall. That's too bad. So a lot of things I could be doing a little bit better here for sure. Eyes are on bot. Now, a couple of different paths in. Do I want to help these guys push out? If I help them push out, then we have an avenue for dragon. Looks like they're already pushing out. Wade got a big wave in as well, so I think I'm good to do this. There's Nocturne topside, so we're absolutely in the clear. It also means that we're going to be able to hit his respawns, and it looks like his uh, red is already coming up. Problems. Finish this guy. Should be an easy kill for them. Here, you put his E on cooldown and his R, so that should be an easy win. 
Although they block their own spells, so you're gonna have problems here. And it looks like they give it away too. All right, unfortunate. It is what it is, can't control it. All right, Nocturne's gonna see me dead. He's gonna think that I can go for a play over here. <clears throat> we wanna be top side so we can finish. That's what I get for taking a riskier play during a back window. Not awful. A lot of things had to go wrong, including me playing poorly. Could have also flashed to dodge the damage, so it's not even the end of the world. Gonna save my queue here, so I have it for this. Missed again. Nocturne could be around the corner, so we're actually going to keep on pulling this. And we're in position for this. What is Nocturne going to do? Is he going to opt? He's clearly going to go back to his red side, right? Because he just hasn't cleared that in forever. So there's almost no reason to believe that he would come over to this side. We have York that we might have to deal with. We do get around the vision. He might have plopped something in our in here that we could have watched for. But all things, all signs point to me being able to take this. Last time was a little bit dicey. We knew about the Nocturne being top. Uh, kind of random, actually, that Azir even tried to make a play towards bot lane. Right, that's generally not something you expect to do. You wouldn't want to do that under most circumstances. Let's go kill this maiden. I don't think I get out here. Still worth. Could have dropped the thing. Gives this guy free lane while he's pushing out. <clears throat> I don't know about your extemper. Yeah, there's the York teleport. Whew. All right, so we can go with something that's just always good and go here. That's the wall push that we want. I missed clicked. Okay, we fall block the Azir, we take that. <clears throat> That's our win. Now we take this as a temple, right? So we don't actually force anything in here. That ward looks like it was in here, probably. Did I walk right past it? No, we're good. This actually gives us a tempo for pushing here. Nocturne's already in position as well, so I'm, now I'm already guarding against the uh, Nocturne dive here. This guy doesn't realize it, so I'm just going to shadow him. Nocturne's thinking about it for sure. He lost sight. No, he went bot. All right, we'll take his whole jungle. <clears throat> he hasn't been there in a while.
Hmm, you know what? This is actually pushing out. Only needs a little nudge to stay alive. It's far enough on this side. It is a cannon wave, so it is going to be pushing out, but leaving it up here for the Aatrox to pick up is totally fine. All right, what do we want? Resist, we're going to go cooldowns, and we're going to do this, and what are we going to build from here? I think my team needs me to be red, because they need me to hold on, hold on to things. I'm not positive that it's going to work, but it's the best shot I've got. Knock R is up soon. Good call. Good call. Turret plating will fall soon. I do not kill the dragon. The red thing. All right, here we go. Way is getting gapped. Hey. I'm only doing that, by the way, because I want it dead right now, and I've got these to fill me back up. <clears throat> only reason. If I didn't see that thing in front, then I wouldn't have done it. Little cane trick, you can stick it to the corner right here. Oh, I'm in trouble. We don't have way here. Aatrox needs to GTFO, dude. So it's such a moronic play. That's too bad. You know what? I probably made a few myself, so it's no big deal. See if they're keeping an eye on this thing. They're going back in. Now I could do the cane thing. Ooh, how did I miss? That's too bad. Unfortunately, this is coming out. Aatrox has no teleport, so there's no real good way about this. <clears throat> it, York did come back up top, so it's not that big of a deal. <sighs> good job, bot. Take notes, by the way, if you're clearing endgame, never take one camp. Uh-oh, we've got uh, Ash by herself. Someone's pinging something over here. We have Ash in the wrong lane. going for this this seems kind of numb 3v1 all right we've got Aatrox coming in too they've got the Herald hey that's so early that's so 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 early
Got the we've got the Azir trapped. Oh, do we get York as well? That'd be crazy. He's hunting. We've got a way, so we've got really good support items. That guy just flashed, right? Bad angle. Rip. We should just keep pushing it while we're here. <sighs> Gore Drinker's a big spike. We're giving up Dragon here. Should just dive this guy off, frankly. I just missed that. So you always take something, right? <clears throat> now they're on that side of the map, no reason to not take this. We'll pick these two up and then we'll go get our item. We need to make sure that we have it in time for the Baron buff. AD. <clears throat> we need to survive. We need to be a brick for this game. I think we're going to go here. Mm. Can you clear side lane so Ash can mid? Like this guy, there's no reason to be up this far into the lane, but he's doing it. You know, it's, it's making our whole team have really, really awkward macro. the alt there they go you like that i know you like that you like that that play was sick I won't lie, that play was freaking sick. Team? 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 Okay. Like, it's not their job to go take this. That wave would have taken care of mid for us, we're good. It's a win, it's a small win, but like, that's a huge mistake, you don't want to make that mistake. Just get out. I did not know you could do that. I didn't know you did not know you could get an extra Q off. All right, they're engaging. Our team was bought. Oh, I see a Jin. Yeah. 
Let's see his ear. Good. That's Way's job. <clears throat> if you're playing in this game and you're the mage, make sure that you're the one clearing the arc out. I wouldn't normally take that, but I'm fairly certain this guy has very few games on way, so I'm going to take it away. I'm also going to take away these sort of things from them, so that they lose some of their access to quick movement. This guy's overreaching. Ends up getting a kill though, gets paid off. escape come on get me out she's using Shirelia's get me out <sighs> I shouldn't have gone. I in my in my mind I knew that guy was way past his brink. Ash way out of position. Words of wisdom. All right, so I did get enormous. Also, with 3,000 gold, I absolutely should have been looking to spend all this. So what are we trying to do here? This guy's still going all AD. This guy's still going full. So <clears throat> I want to be in the middle of these fights. I want to be able to carry the most amount of impact. Death Stance is probably the tankiest item I can get. Uh, Spear of Shojin is actually just secretly OP on this champ, so maybe we'll just go there. We'll do it like this. We don't have a bot either, man. I mean, let's be real. I think I just need to shadow these guys. <laughs> I've been spending too much time in the jungle trying to get away with what I could get away with.
not strong enough to do anything yet. Oh, nice. Give them the gold, they scale with the gold better than we do. Hmm, I have time to take this. That was a lot of tools of theirs, right? They're engaging here. Oh, I didn't need to do that. Let's get close enough to the York so we can actually get to him. Should be good enough. Don't die. Really? That's too bad. Something must have been burning me. We have one dead. We're definitely stronger for this. <clears throat> we have to do it before the things get in play. win for us. <clears throat> We're that much stronger there. Uh, wait, can you go get supers? Thank you. Way has magical damage and is worse at team fights. Eh, I mean, the character's better. The character's better at killing supers, and the player's worse at playing team fights. All signs lead to Hoi picking up the waves. His Hoi's waves. <laughs> Do we just find a kill here? This would be wonderful. We might. Oh, he just put his young cool down too. Hey, I should be able to get through that, don't you think?
We need way on waves. To win, that's two wins. Can't win 4v5, he says. Looks like we're about to, but we don't have a wave. Oh, this guy's way too aggro. Way, way, way too aggro. This guy has no idea what's going on. Found one. Getting one back is all we needed to do. Give resources to the ash. We gotta, we gotta go pick up waves. Uh, we can go do this, three of us. Three Baron way wave clear. No, oh, they're going dragon. Oh my gosh. I would much, 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 much rather have Baron and then let them have Dragon and then use the pressure from the Baron to go get Soul. But can't always have everything. What am I even chopping for? I don't even know. Let's fix some waves. No, nope, I'm showing on bot lane. I just committed the ultimate foul. I'm just a, I'm just so bad. This is what happens once there's bad macro. Gosh, that's entirely on me though. They are smart. Oh, here we go. We're gonna find an engage right here. This is gonna be an engage. They don't have the maiden. No, we didn't find it. Ash, oh, Ash Arrow's down. I'm oh, tilted, maybe. There's a chance I'm just tilted. Why am I killing this? No reason. Yeah, my endgame just looks awful. Lost an inhibitor to the Maiden, and we're about to lose another one right here. Nice. Nice. Oh boy. Oh boy. 
There better be an Asher all right there or there's nothing to play for. What a teleport. <laughs> They're engaging on mid? Okay, that's a huge mistake if they do that. Unfortunately, our team had already decided that leaving was the right play, and they didn't turn around to, uh, ameliorate. They traded. Okay, not the worst. What's up, Jin? Can keep you right about here. Come on, man. They got the Rick. It's true. It's true. Rick rolled us. It is known. What do you guys think? Zero zero twenty six milio player. Oh my goodness. I didn't even see that. What do you guys think? Thumbs up or thumbs down for the Ash? Ugh. I'm just... Give him a coaching opportunity. That is too bad. I right, we definitely screwed up. We showed on the bottom side of the map. Huge foul. Huge. All right, Black has a checkmate. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Got to start like this, right? Then we chase the king away. Let's see, we go here, only move is here. Here, only move is here, okay. What? Oh, because we don't actually have this. We'd be blocking our own bishop, of course. All right, so does it start like that and then he has to go, nope. Oh, is this just, this is just checkmate like this, oh. Gosh. For some reason, I thought he could get away. Oh, lazy. Maybe that just means that we're not in tune today. I'm super disappointed in myself for going to bot lane there. You can see the types of mistakes people make in this ELO. Like, don't be that guy. Be the one that can, that can solve that problem, right? Way, it's still really early. Probably shouldn't be playing ranked games with Way. Champion does a lot of really cool things, does a lot of really powerful things, but you're so hovered on that that you stop thinking about what you're supposed to do. Yorick can be answered by a control mage. Mage can just go wipe out the wave, wipe out the maiden, that's it. Clean your hands of it, boom, you continue, and then you have the teleport, and you try to answer the Yorick that way. Way staying mid, and then Ash going side to side means that Way doesn't know what's going on. Ash doesn't know what's going on. They are both in the wrong positions. It means that everyone's susceptible to Nocturne. Makes my job hard. 
I need to do better though. I need to figure out where where is it that I can stand that kind of solves both issues, maybe be in the quadrant between the two of them, maybe maybe just stand on that on that baron anyways. Team had no interest in that baron. We went to dragon and then I went bot lane, which was just a crucial crucial mistake. I mean, going to dragon was already the mistake. Is so so much worse. If we take that Baron, use the empowered recalls, right? They have 18 second death death timers, then we can go. So let's go, let's just go over this. Gotta be right over here, right? No. Nope. It's after this win? No. It's gotta be later. I thought it was with second dragon. Yeah, so this is it. Yeah, 100%. Okay. So here we go. What to do in this position? Let's go red vision. All right, we've got death timers. 21, 31, 46, 29. So we have our run of the map. The one thing that we can't do is end the game because we don't have a wave, which is tragic, right? We didn't have good wave responsibilities from our players. So that's not something that we're gonna get. It's not something that you're gonna get until you're in high elo, at least D2 plus, probably not until Grandmasters where people will really truly understand what their job is. If we have a wave, we can do this. Also, if we're slightly later in the game, and, and if Ash has four items, then we have another option. We're on three and a half. You don't have the the um, mortal reminder yet, which means that you don't quite have the damage to rip through this, which you could do in some situations with the right support. If you have an enchanter uh, support with shields and empowering effects, then you can actually just end the game from this position. With three champions would be totally fine, right? And teleport uh, available from way would be something we could do. We could just ward, step in, do this for ourselves. We don't have that. We end up backing out. Second best option, if if you were slightly bigger, right? If Ash had half an item more, we'd be able to take this. Uh, it's possibly close as it stands anyways. But of the two options, let's go objective timers. What do you go for here? You've got the dragon spawning in 15 seconds. You've got the Baron up. You've got two inhibitors down. You've got theirs. Your inhibitor timings are coming. Let's see if we can figure out where this happened. 34, 27 is what we're talking about. These three all went down. So there we go, the respawn there, the bot went down, middle one was already down from that fight, then Azir took this other one, top lane has already respawned. And there we go, yeah, so we've got the respawning on top lane already happening. Way's job is to, to fill this out, you might still have a super in, in your way, so it's got to be the control mage that does it. Then we take this win fight. What would you do? Unfortunately, Aatrox died. Int inted for the kill on Azir. All right, it was it was an int, but it was you know one for one, and Azir is the biggest problem, so I don't mind that trade. We didn't need to do it. Map we had clear run of the map. What it did do is it delayed us by about twenty seconds because we had to spend a little bit ten extra seconds here trying to achieve that. Azir by themselves is not going to accomplish anything ever. The answer is Baron. All right, when you're here, twenty seven seconds on Nocturne. I mean, frankly, if Way had teleport. You're almost, almost looking at an end right here. Even with even with the wave right here, it is close because you're looking at 37 seconds. It only takes 40 to take the wave from here in. Now versus supers, we can cut off the wave. No big deal. We're basically just waiting for this wave to get in, which is about the same timer as this York respawning with the Janna. All right, so they'd be playing defense with two champions against four. This is something that was available to us. It'd be right on the knife's edge about what to do. Uh, we are way, way, way up on gold. So there is something uh, to be said about just reestablishing, taking the Baron, coming back, fighting for the dragon. With these death timers, there's more than enough time to just take this and then back, recall, spend all of our gold. Let's look at how much gold we're actually sitting on right here. 
2,400, 1,100, 1,100. Now, Aatrox is spending that right now. Wei hasn't gotten anything. He's in charge of the top wave. Everybody's got gold to spend. 100% of the time, you take the Baron here, then you use the Empowered Recall, and you come back. Who can take this dragon? Nobody. All right, we'll be done with this Baron as Nocturne is respawning. We will be back in base. We're basically coming out at the exact same time. With the Empowered Recalls, we'd be showing up at a relevant time. It would be just Jin and Nocturne. Zero chance that they have this dragon dead. We'd be able to fight for it. Even if we'd be giving this dragon and giving soul, it would be worth it. Because what you can do when you take Baron and you get and they get soul, what you do is you fix the map. And over the course of the next five minutes, right, three minutes with the Baron buff, you can create other advantages. In this case, 100% our turrets are going to, our inhibitors are respawning. This will still be down for the duration, all right? This one will just be coming up as uh, one and a half minutes before the Elder comes up, which means that we might still have a super on the map as we're contesting this area. You can use Baron to break this side of the map, have supers coming in on the top side while the hair while the elder is respawning you also have a chance to re-break this one because you're going to break the top lane with your lead and the baron then you come siege mid you re-break this now they're dealing with two supers coming into their base as you go and you already have good position because you're moving from here to there it means you get to take control of their southern quadrant as well so this is how you take aim of how you take the lead all right you take this you take baron Recall, contest. Even if you're late for contest, you start pushing this lane here. You go top lane all the way to the end. You've got six minutes until the elder spawns. All right, so this is going to come up in five minutes. This will be spawning. You've got uh, it's up in 15 plus the contest, 35 seconds about. So six minutes and 35 seconds. You've got plenty of time to take this whole push break it down this will be dead as elder is spawning which means they will have supers in this part of the lane now specific to this game york maiden can actually still win against supers all right uh especially post level 11 and and easily after level 16 the maiden does win as long as there's a wave if they both have the wave the maiden wins uh that's the only thing you have to play against. We have double teleports. We should be fine to give it that extra nudge. Or we see the, that the Maiden's there. We go kill the Maiden and then do the rest of our job because we've got so much time, right? Everything will be off the map for six minutes from now. We won't have to care about anything until 34, uh, basically third, sorry, basically 41 minutes into the game. We'll have the Baron at 40 and we'll have the Elder Dragon at 41. It will be a super easy macro play to just come Break this, re-break this, siege here, come through this. Like everything is available to you if you just take the check marks and you just cross your I's, dot your T's, you do everything in order. When you skip steps and you over-prioritize something like Dragon, then you end up giving them windows to go take the better buff. There's no doubting Baron is better than Soul. Baron is much better than just random Dragon. D3, not even close, right? So you take Baron, you give them Soul, even if we were making the trade, we'd be fine. In this case, it's just so easy. Uh, the play is very easily go here, recall, come back over here, and fight for it with your big, big, big lead. This is 5k already, plus you'll get another 1500 from the Baron. You've got the extra level advantages coming from it, and we already out-level them uh, going into this fight. The big one being Ash versus Jin. Our carry's better, our jungler's better, we're up in every single position. The only person who's down is Wei, and Wei's had all game to practice their champions. So hopefully that makes sense, guys. You can use this in your games when you get this position right here. Baron is up, Dragon is up, and you just broke mid, you just won the fight. If you can't end, number one, you look for what end you can do. Second, you look for what's the biggest thing I can take. And here it's the Baron. It's not close. All right. So good luck in your games. I hope hopefully you guys can use this. Uh, it's harder and harder the lower and lower you get because your teammates don't know it. Uh, so it's best to give it a ping right here on the map, a ping right here on the objective. And you put one thing in text, be like Baron recall dragon. And you just do it. You move over. You hope it's enough. And hopefully your teammates will match you. You do the best. You do the best play. Over time, it'll give you the best results. Don't necessarily need to do what your team wants you to do. Come over, do the best play, do what's right. Enough times people will come over and you'll get bigger and better leads from it. <sighs> I didn't report anyone that game.
All right, it is lunchtime for me. I'm going to take a break and go get some food. Uh, hopefully, guys, you like that Fast Five. If you do, make sure you like and subscribe. I will be back in about 15 minutes, fed and ready to roll. All right, catch you then. Peace. at 10.
just feel the temperature rise Baby, tell me one more beautiful light One touch and I ignite I feel the heat as we collide Like a fever that feels alright So baby, tell me one more beautiful light One touch and I Tell me one more beautiful light One touch and I ignite I feel the heat as we collide Like a fever that feels alright So baby tell me one more beautiful light One touch and I
What you came for, blood on the game ball. Everybody drop it like rainfall. Uh, this is your moment. Eyes on a bumper, can't think church just open. And you're singing your praises, la la la. Screaming your name, la 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 la. One more step, you're mortal now. Cause once you play God, once you play God. Show next on the ladder. Is it your name in 
What you came for, blood on the game bow. Everybody drop it like rainfall. Uh, this is your moment, eyes on a puppet. Can't think, chest just open. And you're singing your praises, la la la. Screaming your name, la 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 la. One more step, you're mortal now. Cause once you play God, once you play God.
Man, that song is so fire, isn't it? So good. Uh, apparently, we're gonna have the Korean, the Korean Sentinel tech. Apparently, it's out. Maybe we should watch it. I guess we should watch it. And we've heard it all. Go to the dentist. Thanks for being patient, everybody who stuck around. What's up, guys? Uh, gotta say, being a chef is a lot of fun. You get to make some absolutely delicious food, and uh, in this case, we had some chile sin carne. It's uh, a chili recipe for vegetarians <clears throat> that is just absolutely amazing. And then I also made a bird's nest, which is essentially shredded thin fried vegetables. Uh, you fry them up, you douse them in a little bit of egg and flour, and you fry them, and then you end up with this like thing that looks like a bird's nest. And with a little bit of soy sauce, with a little bit of sugar and sriracha in it, makes just this incredible sauce. And my goodness, it's feeling good, man. It feels really good to eat good. Uh, and you know, it's not, not so unhealthy. So a little, well, you know what, a little bit of the, of the oil, flour, sugar. So, you know, there's a little bit of stuff in there still, but, but, uh, maybe, maybe better than most. By the patch, but there's so many melee carries, like all the reroll comps with like Yone and Jack, as well as all the AD carries that are just bursting past your front line. Let me introduce you to a new tech that's emerging in Korea, Six Sentinel. Six oh, emerging in Korea, they say. I'm not going to take credit. Everyone can do this. It's been on the patch. It's just really good. Uh, I think it's absolutely fantastic. And like we said, there's there's two different boards you can build, play with it. You can play Spellweaver with Ari Carry, or you can play with Caitlyn Carry. Sentinel is thriving off of having an unkillable, unburstable frontline and scaling whatever backline unit is behind it. It's similar to previous sets where you have things like Bastion of Philios or Vanguard Mystic. You know what's interesting? Actually, thinking about this is 
the Sentinel front line means that you're getting much more value out of Ginsu's Rage Blade, right? You get much more time to scale up. That's interesting. Really solid tank. Same thing with Annie, actually. Annie, HP. You can scale that front line to be strong enough to withstand all that crazy burst. So the Caitlyns aren't getting through your front line, and all those melee carries like Jax, Yone, and Zed are not slicing through your front line tank like a hot knife through butter. We're gonna hop on board one of the best players ever from Korea, Bobe, and see just how it's done. Bobe is considered to be one of the strongest players ever. Okay. Ever from Korea. Korea. So this is this is the video. I won't watch any more of it, but you get the idea. Korean Sentinel Tech is dominating the ladder in too deep with Frodan. So if you guys want to check it out, <clears throat> which might mean, since Frodan is a popular character, it might mean that it gets uh, more and more contested. When you're playing this Sentinel front line, the biggest weakness, true damage, right? So true damage sh should still be able to cut through it. Also, Kiana pushes waves. So she can take your front line and still kind of just punch it back. So it's worth worth noting that that's something to get through. But Senna, as a reroll, probably have to carry Senna. Might, might be much more likely that we try to roll on six to get Senna two. Maybe roll on seven for just a slightly better team, but roll on six, we should still have access to lots of Garens, lots of Senna's, probably hit a Caitlyn, so we should get that 8-bit synergy on as well. Uh, and if we if we lost streak, then we can get like a true damage emblem for the Caitlyn and then go go from there. So there's probably some options. Ferdinand's getting better at making videos. I appreciate this guy. All right, what do you think? Hashtag strat chat. Can we make it? Do we do we just force it? Is it that good? I think by playing it, we stop other people from being good there. We also make sure that we are stronger with Senna. If we're going to play, be playing into it, the problem is we might have a severely contested Senna board. Uh, but Senna, Echo, maybe late game Kiana and Zed. What other crowd diver might we want? Actually, Katarina... Katarina has heal cut. She wounds. So there's something to be said about that. Sticking Katarina right in front of the right in front of the redemption and trying to get that splashing right there. What other things could we use to ramp up? I mean, obviously we have Sona. Ginsu, Ginsu Sona. We saw on the screen it was um Gunblade and Spear Shojin on Ari. I think the last couple of games, one of the things that we had issue with is that we weren't committing. We're like really committing, right? This is also something, right? You can shred. So Kale, like Kale could just be a benefactor of a metagame, right? Like sometimes, sometimes it's as simple as that. Sometimes it's the way things are shaping. If everyone's building Sentinel, then true damage gets better. If everyone's bu building like slow scaling things, then Annie gets better. Uh, Annie needs to be able to actually beat that team, so you need to make sure that you have a tool for Annie to actually rip through the Sentinels. Uh, true damage might be a way, but she tends to want exactly three items. Double Spear Shojin plus Crit or whatever else. <clears throat> Nasher's Tooth. We are not going to get distracted. That is our plan. Still want to build the best board. This is actually a really good. Carry for the early game. I don't know in what world we would actually keep this Jax. Probably just going to pick up Tom Kench and Evelyn. Have more chance of hitting. Stacks. Ooh. This is one of those... Okay, insert coin we could use to have the Corky and Garen and just kind of have those executes. Interesting. All right, big gains is also something where we can just start stacking that early comp. Ooh, we could lost streak with this. Right, you know what? I'm going to scout a little bit, make sure no one else is insert coin. All right, we're going to go insert coin. We're just going to take it for what it is. We're going to build out early. 
like this. We can still Lost Streak. I can go for Econ and Lost Streak. Is this good enough? I think so. So this means we're going to go for Caitlyn. I mean, there is a world where you can go with Kaisa. Or even Misfortune. Big Shot and get a little bit of Big Shot in. We can we're safe to build Caitlyn items on Corky, that's for sure. This guy, this guy has Deathblade anyway for the early Corky. If we accidentally beat this guy, that would be so bad for us. We can turn the sound back on, hopefully it's there. Everybody on the mo ever, ever since Vegas, where everyone's like, Corky's the strongest early unit. Everybody's just there. <clears throat> and they've got Stars Are Born, too. This guy hasn't even used his Stars Are Born yet. Maybe use Stars Are Born and then hide. Come on, let's get one more kill. scared about picking up misfortune if we pick up misfortune we get big shot we get some extra kills but all right that guy's a two star this guy's got two star all right we should be okay to pick up misfortune and not win any fights we're still we're still on this mission to just kill a couple units This guy didn't buy anything. Oh, what a chat. Oh my gosh. Okay. Let's see if we can lose this anyways. There's a chance we do. Yeah, there we go. That's what we're talking about. Vi too strong. This is the unit no one's talking about, by the way. I actually only killed one unit in a four on three. How crazy is that? Unless uh, there's just a visual bug. Nope. Yeah, I just played three. Goodness, please, please, please. This would open interesting doors. Like getting a true damage emblem for our Caitlyn. instantly start winning if I play this unit. Kind of doing the minimum right now. These things are put in a web like this, by the way, so that they're more likely to consolidate on one target. Um, we don't really want to win, but again, we want to focus fire. Our team, I don't think, is that strong. We shouldn't be just winning games, but true damage should give us some avenues to um, scale into the end game. Our first uh, insert coin bonus. The, the one big downside here is the build. It's a little bit more awkward. Once you play Corky, you don't really want to play Senna. Like you, you do, but you don't. Heart Steel, it's actually, you know what? Let's take away the true damage synergy. Take a Felios. This will give us some more building options. 
Also make us a little bit weaker in case we do play against this guy. He should he should still beat us. It's like perfect targeting for him. The thing dies, it gets executed. None of his guys get aggroed. Okay, perfect loss. No oh, shit, we might win this. Oh no. Oh no, Aphelios, it's gonna come down to who casts. No, he's gonna win, I'm gonna win. How did I win this with scapegoat? Unless he can one-shot me, I, I kill him on the way back. Oh my gosh, are you joking? <sighs> Even when we're winning, we can't win. <sighs> I'm doing this because I want better shops. <clears throat> it may not even cost me the gold. Might as well have the unit in play. Kill these a little bit faster. Make some more decisions. I don't know that it's right. We do have heart steel now. Unfortunately, the music sucks. Should I kept the ones? All right, we've got Ginsu's that can become a. Uh, Senna item. Level six. He's the six quick. I will also want to be six quick. It looks like we've got a mix of mash of moshers and Senna rapid fire players. We've got no one playing super fan. No one person playing super fans. All right, so we did win. The other downside about being 8-bit and loose streaking is that we're not actually getting the full value. Like, we're not charging up 8-bit as quickly as we'd like to. We're still gonna have no problem getting to 8. Level 8's totally easy, you know, very easy. Level 9 and 10 take a little bit more, and if we're a little bit late on that, then we could be in, in uh, some big problems. Gargantuan Resolve. I do like this in this build because those guys take forever to kill. You're also playing 1s and 2s that allow your carries to deal more. Kind of like this one. To level or not to level? If we level, we're probably ending up sending the selling the Cassante. Yeah, we're gonna do that. No big deal. That's if we even win. Maybe I should have kept it. It's only worth the one gold. Maybe my team's gonna spike too much. I can't believe I lost on 2-6. Another option is to be here. KDA. I don't I don't like it. I don't like it. This one seems best. We're getting a little bit stronger. We haven't made enough money off of our executions, guys.
we're gonna go seven and we're gonna we're gonna spend a lot of money here and try to get ourselves a comp either get heart steel five which we need the Ezreal for or or we need to like build out the rest of our comp we could just wait for the cash out just coming here gosh we need to kill more units guys Nobody's left on 8-bit. We've got a Garen. This guy might, uh, he might be doing a little bit. <coughs> might be doing the same thing we're doing, actually. looks His board looks almost identical to ours. This guy also sent a Felios, right? This guy's doing something very similar. I think the cat is out of the bag, folks. Do we spike here? Do we accept two more losses? Maybe that wanted to be redemption, actually. Maybe I, maybe Warmogs is just wrong. Warmogs is good for one person. Redemption is good for three people. No one is in country. It would be super easy to get into country right now. Although these are pretty garbage for country. Yeah, we're just we're just gonna stay. We're gonna stay the course. We also didn't kill two more units, right? So that's another reason that we could have rolled and done some more. Not getting to 80 is a pretty big deal. Thieves gloves. You know what? That champion likes <clears throat> all types. AD, AP, and has has ratios for everything. So totally, totally fine to put, put that item on there. All right, we pre-level. Let's actually level to put another chance at killing a unit in play. God, we're gonna see so many country roll units in our roll down. It might be worth buying pair, um, buying Samira two or God two, like buying buying everything that could lead us there in case we wanted to. This guy's already got some. Ooh. To give us the not only would it give us the option to pivot but it would also take units out of the pool but might be a little bit too uh, too thin value i don't think we can handle the hard steel anymore just needed to stabilize needed to play something that was strong now we didn't quite have enough gold to like really reach for the rest of of everything i actually have this yone too it's also heart steel and an edgelord so maybe we can just spike with this
It's another one of those games where I just didn't roll down enough, didn't make myself strong enough. Should win this. It's gonna be close. The shields. Do we get another shield off? Is the question. Yeah, we're good. is a problem but we spike a little bit should have used this a long time ago probably just need to find another Garen to do it all right level eight we're going for a big roll down do we actually care do we just should we just pivot hard into this into this riven true damage riven that's what a flexible player would do. Unfortunately, it's not completely uncontested. There's a Kiana, wrong side of the map though. This is Echo. Mm. I don't know that this is actually best. It had the crit on it, which is why I wanted it to go here. And also, I mean, like, Hand of Justice is just a huge spike here for Riven anyways. I might actually just be strong enough with this board. Entire country lineup is gonna mock me here. As a two star gin, that is a Caitlin. Oh my goodness, our options are limited. All right, Riven might just be strong enough to get us through this. So if we can pick up Kane, Heart Steel Edge Lord, farm our way through this, maybe pick up a Riven three star. I think this is our plan. Oh, this is the other eight bit. We'll save that for the Riven. This seems pretty dead. Yoni's not really doing much either. This is the center, which would be the more traditional usage. We just put this back in the right. We've, we've got a plan. We're, we're going to go with this. We're going to go Heart Steel, try to get Kane, uh, try to heal up. We've got 8 bit synergies. Sentinel probably just better here But if we can get Kane, then we can replace the Zed and hopefully farm with five edgelords Level nine would be better so we can get actual chances of hitting echo of hitting this I should say But if we just bench these we can't just bench this 
We need cane for this. If we do cane for this, and then we're looking for Rivens, Viegos, a better Sentinel here. That should be Blitzcrank. I don't know that we really want to have Cassante anymore. Right, I think we I think we want to be nine just for the units. 70 is so much gold though. I don't think we can do it here. We need Kanye. was a big deal for us. All right, I suppose you're not going in anymore, huh? And if we're going if we're going Kanye, then we don't need this, even though this is really good for our front line. We can also sell this. There's too many people in Echoes. Could sell the Echoes and go for Viego. We do have two lives, so we can actually not progress here. Although hitting Riven would be a huge spike for us, and we're only one Riven away, so. This might bite us. Got bitten. Maybe should have considered picking up that Yasuo. One HP. All right, one HP. But now we don't have enough money to go the rest of the way. Oh, it's a cane with. Oh my gosh. Of course it is. Oh, and a true damage emblem. Oh my god, that might even be better. But this is Biss on him. Like literally his best item. I might have a melee problem. I might have a melee problem. I don't need all the Sentinels. I can cut Blitzcrank and... I can cut Blitzcrank and Cassante. That's 11 extra gold. No, then I won't have Heartsteel. Heartsteel is my chance of actually, like, performing in this lobby. True damage, Crowd Diver, but let's do like this. 30. We're so short. Hey, that was a Riven. I pressed the wrong button. <sighs> Leave it up to uh, chance. Riven just got popped. We lose. I get it. I'm just 
bad bad this is this is probably the elo where i need to start just having a comp that fits into the meta and just go for meta breaking this is generally how i end up climbing in tft i could pra i mean i could practice my skills by having a comp but i con country just gets left alone so much now the problem is country's absolutely awful if if it's contested so let's do a little theory crafting let's do some theory craft tft team builder we're going to go through with champions that do not get played boom boom uh, although sentinel maybe but some people go here here mostly we're going to get two costs this champion kale might be might be interesting again though one of those things where if anyone's playing kaisa some people end up playing but we could go back back to the origins of of the set uh punk i mean punk i had i did finish first with my punk game i think you need perfect augments to want to go punk but punk can also lead to early snowballs with with vi right you get completely uncontested units what units do not get played kind of seraphine although seraphine's going to show up in the same kind of sentinel team got the disco units I don't really want to think too much about one costs because I need them to I need to think of like what could maybe carry of the people here who can actually carry one two I mean bard can get you a long way nar can get you a long way so I don't I don't think Kaisa's ever like really carrying but what do we have we've got disco kind of sucks hyper pop which is great Lulu's just fantastic so Spellweaver, maybe it's early Spellweaver. Gragas Mosher, Superfan. All right, check this out. Let's try. Boom, boom, boom. Let's get rid of. And let's just put the uh, Universal Solvent Echo into this team. All right, where, where are we missing? KDA, we should be missing a Spellweaver. All right, so Lulu would have to become Seraphine, right? And then we get, then we get like near perfect everything. Disco, Pentakill, Bruiser, Mosher. Oh yeah, yeah, we need a uh, set. Set glues this together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, so this is a team that would be fairly easy to build. Oh, I have two of these. This is a team that would be fairly easy to build. Very good synergies. Super fan carry. Maybe it's maybe it's a, a NAR angle. This looks like a level six where you add these in later. KDA super fan guardian. Not that not that good. Set. Who can carry from here? We've got Mosher. All right, so. True damage can easily carry, but these are not really carry units. No one's been playing Kennen that much anymore. Could There's a world where you can get Kennen 3 now. Uh, there's definitely a world where you can hit Gnar. This is probably reliant on hitting an early Superfan, because once you hit early Superfan, you get access to Superfan 5. It becomes a Radiant item, but that's, like, that's good enough for third place. I don't feel like that you're ever going to get first place with this team, but it's super consistent. Right, you've got three three costs, so you can go five and build that board with just super fans, right? Super fan four probably. You could even roll. You could roll at five. You'd probably want to roll at six. And then depending, I mean, if you don't get super fan, you might get KDA. Like this is pretty solid, and these are tankyish guys, and Seraphine can heal this. This is probably a really good opener. Hmm. Then we're just a set away, actually, from having a really solid team. So set comes here. You get Mosher and Bruiser. Set can't really carry. He almost could, and he's sort of being forgotten about, although everyone plays him in Heartsteel, but they always end up dropping him eventually. Uh, but he's still part of that core of that, like, Thresh, Alawi, uh, Yorick 
front line. Maybe, th maybe this is just a way to level and then you have to actually transition. You give Yorick items to Gnar. Maybe this is just a build up. I want a team that I can like rely on to round six, you know, level six, roll this team. Super fan, you'd have to find super. You're basically trying to find super fan Gnar and it's super fan Gnar or bust. And then I, I've had that team, that team without selling the Gnar got me to second place. Five super fans, he just jumps into the middle of the team. It was like, um, yeah, I believe he gets a Steric Gauge. So I think it was Steric Gauge, Bloodthirster, and Titan's Resolve, and then he was just chilling. Echo wraps everything together. Okay, we got some ideas. Again, might just be a build up. Fast Nine is kind of dead. Tempo is too high. Too much reroll at for twos and threes going on. Echo and Senna probably as contested as they rightfully should be. Senna might be a meta breaker if if the Sentinel line becomes too good, but like being in the middle of this composition that everyone's forcing uh, seems like a tough time. So what are the things we could do? What could we ever star up Gragas? Maybe we just star up this whole team. This team's fine. You get you get Mosher. He's got, gonna have the synergy. I guess you want Echo for the extra Sentinel as well. So he's got the extra stats. It's not that big of a deal. Like this composition, this is seven. This is seven without getting the Nico, and we still end up with part of the bonuses for the super fan, right? Even without Nico. But then you can go eight and wrap it all up. Is this my team? Is it's a level six reroll team? Slow roll stage three. Win streak stage one. Try to find Nar. Hyper roll. Hyper roll in four one. Try to build out the team, then get the echo, and then f and the Nico. So there's our core. We're gonna go for two stars here. Do we go for all of these three? Star does Seraphine go three star? Oh, does she become the carry? If I go KDA, then I don't actually need the Nico right away, and I get all those stats to lead off with. All right, it's, there's, uh, you know, some stuff to, to work with. You know what this team would be fantastic with is Cruel Pact. Cruel Pact, there's three different teams that I think you can build off of Cruel Pact. You can do the little bit of everything Gragas Echo build, you can do Country, or you can do the EDM. EDM is fantastic with that, with Cruel Pact. I think both times that I got Cruel Pact, I got first place with going EDM. So we're gonna we're gonna try to get this thing artifact anvil. We have to remember that everybody's much stronger this game. I wish you could actually sort those. Country Bruiser. Do we do we actually just skip all things, or do we go straight for something that has immediate early game power? I don't know if this is actually gonna get chunked. Tried.
It's looking like an AP game. This would be a fantastic time to pick up this Cassante uh, and build this, the other team. We're doing it. Alright, are we farming or are we... What are we doing here? We got seven gold here on the bench. We could push, go for double these guys. We could put this in play. the sentinel team we absolutely do not want to do that We're gonna hit level four. No, we are we're already four, sorry. We're gonna we're gonna hit another headliner here, and if it's Nar, we I guess we jump. But we're missing out on econ right now by not selling stuff. This is a great snowballing tool, by the way. Making me lean heavily towards sticking around here. Get any, we don't get any takedowns, we don't get anything out of this. Oof, ouch. Must be nice. And he has the uh, two champion duplicators, so that, that guy's going to be hitting that hard. Okay, are we out? We're out. How do we best kill a unit? we have enough openings that we can get away with this. Echo can use the shield, Set can use it for damage. No one else really wants it, Seraphine maybe. Gonna go with Steric's Gauge. We're gonna try to find this Gnar. Hmm. I'm dumb. It's not. He's gonna get Steric's Gauge for free, so. Uh, double Steric's might even just be right. Because he's gonna have he's gonna have vamp, so maybe Bloodthirster is actually just wrong. Maybe it is double Steric's Gauge and Titan's Resolve.
putting those in the pool seems a little risky. Do I put redemption in? Do I put redemption in? Do I put redemption in? He's gonna have Sterix Gauge. Double Sterix Gauge does feel right. I want to get some takedowns. I'm not gonna do it like this. Jesus. Jesus, Annie. Easy girl. Could probably actually buy that one to keep him keep him off of it for a little bit. Sentinel, not good enough. Not good enough. It would be good and it would make my team better, but I don't really need to make my team better right now, do I? Probably hemorrhaging too much. All right, so we want Seraphine. Just gonna take this away from the other guy. That guy was high rolling too much. The early EDM jacks plus the Zonias is absolutely perfect. Like the fact that he opened up Zonias and then had the jacks right there waiting for him. This is one thing we have going for us is this extra thing, but we remember we spent that turn where we hedged our bets and we didn't get full econ, so we're not even in, in the econ lead. All right, this is gonna swap. What do we have, 70-30 now, or no, 60-40? Or does it go to 40-60? okay. There's definitely a world where you take this and we just roll with it. Mm. There's already a Seraphine super fan player, another Seraphine player. You know what? Oh, it's so tempting. No, we're gonna do it. We wanna we wanna test the upper limits of Nar. That'll make things interesting, actually. <sighs> Could make something KDA earlier. Can make this into KDA specifically. That should preserve preserve us a lot of HP. Alright, the reason we're sticking with this team, by the way, the reason we didn't pivot is because of this big gains. I don't want to be in this cycle where I keep on pivoting because it ruins this augment. This augment just wants to stay in play. It wants to build, 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 build. You want to keep going. You know, the spell, uh, spell learning, I think, is the other one. They're just stacks, same thing. You just want something that's going to be part of your endgame in there right off the bat. Oh, that's bad for me. Uh, this is very interesting, though. Because I can basically build this whole team at five. I still want to go six, I think. I didn't I didn't talk enough about it. Gain two player health and one gold after it. You're also moved faster. Gain eight gold now.
This is not, this is not sound strategy. The only part that's sound about it is this thing. We're gonna try to survive and scale up. We're still lost streaking, we're still stacking. The Seraphines are. This guy's super fan Sentinel. That's my team essentially. Yeah, he's just way far ahead of me. Those are not permanent items though. Alright. We've got a team here. This is a team. We can survive with this. How much am I putting on trying to find that Gnar? Everybody and them and their mothers playing the K KDA Sentinel starter. Nar should be free and should be very available for me to find and go after. There's probably punting to not take this echo, but you know what we're doing? We're limit testing right now. We're seeing exactly how far down you can go. What you up to? Where are you over there? Wanna come say hi? Wow. What's up? Hello. Yeah. Brr. Oh, I can't afford to go this. We put Gragas on this team. Gragas is on this team, right? Yeah. Spellweaver, interesting. Spellweaver is one of those things. You get three out of five. He's got a really good effect. Actually, like, look how funny this is that we actually just hit this insane board on our own. Mosher. Do we accept it? Do we take it? I think we have to. I don't think we can afford to wait any longer. Alright, where do you belong? Do you belong in yet? Bruiser, Mosher? No, it's gonna be the eight. <sighs> Alright, we should be stable. Mm -hmm. 
Nar should be wide open. That's the, the big saving grace that we've got here. Progress. All right, what do we want for you? We got a spike. <clears throat> we got to get as big as we can right now. All right, we're one Nar away. Once we hit Nar, we can look at going seven. We'll put Gragas in play, which will give us Spellweaver, and then we'll wait to go eight to get um, set. That is very little healing. We also don't have an item on this cannon, which is kind of a pain. That's almost great. This is very good. Especially if we have one item on our front lines. People are spiking. We need to we need to hit it a little bit harder here. Boom, got it. All right, do we spike up for this? No, we don't have, we don't have bruiser. It's okay. Spellweaver is good. Another frontliner is good. Staying here. I don't think we're ever going to get the Senna's here, although this is about the time where people are selling their Senna's. When I say Senna, I mean Seraphine. The fact that we have both of these two, this, this could be helped by going to seven. So maybe on four foot right here, we're going to go all in. Everything. At least go for our top four. Oh, he's got an item now. That's kind of funny. Doesn't get anything off. My team is scaling. We got a little bit of extra health because of the healing, which is another reason to try to stabilize. Go one one more fight. I don't mind losing one more fight. This Nar, without the Titans Resolve, he just fights way too slowly. Maybe I need to actually do something like this. Get him to like jump right into the middle. Only one other person to take aggro. I think I'd actually rather the uh, Nico get hit than than this one. KDA emblem also means I have other options, but. I also, no, I can't find any more Nars. I didn't find the Superfan Nar. I didn't greed for the Superfan. I panicked with my bad early start. So I ended up with Mosher Nar, which means I'm not even going to get the perfect synergies out of set. So when I do play this Gragas, that does mean I can go for a better bruiser like Zack. What do we want here? Do I ever play this and try to farm items with it? We 
The good thing about Gnar right here is that it'll always pick up aggro for this entire half of the board. So I could stick a Kiana right behind him. And he would basically be able to hit for the entire fight. Hmm. It is still a mosher, and it is a cheaper unit, which we might be able to three-star. All right, we're going to try a round of this. Just see how it looks, like how it performs, how it plays out. The fact we don't have spell weavers actually kind of a nerf to everything. <clears throat> but there we go. So, no, Kiana did take aggro. But how did she take aggro? No, she's just getting hit by AoEs. And she did farm some items up for my front line. Maybe she will play out just fine. I'm still lacking so much damage though. Well, that's interesting. That would give us 5 KDA. We'd have to go back to the drawing board on Nars. We'd have to use these items on Kiana. One more time, let's see this. He goes in, draws the aggro. Kiana comes out, starts throwing people around. I could also remake this uh, Seraphine and put the tier onto Kiana. Kiana playing Kiana is playing for first, okay? And it's like un very unlikely to happen. Especially with a performance like that. Although I, that is against the Capjacks guy. Hmm, Kiana, Kiana, Kiana. We're gonna try to hit these threes. All right, Seraphine's never happening and she's done being useful as a character, period. So I think we can go like that. This easily goes here. I could go for another true damage character. You know what? We've got a chance here. Nar survives forever, which means Kiana survives forever. Seraphine's healing him up. I think that's going to want to be a Senna. Or, sorry, a Sona. We just have no damage on this team. It's so bad. Very close. This guy ended up staying with Ser 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 Seraphine.
I'll remake the Seraphine and get a sewn up for something. We're so close and yet so far. But in the end, it didn't even matter. We didn't get our super fan Nar. I think all things lead to the same story. You gotta play each lobby. Each lobby, you gotta do what's right. There's not just one ubiquitous answer. It's probably a lesson everyone else learned a long time ago. I don't even know that there's another Echo to shop for, by the way. This guy has none. None. Okay, maybe there are echoes. For the first time ever, people aren't collecting echoes. It's so garbage. Maybe, we, I mean, maybe if we had stuck with Seraphine. Also, we had that option of picking up that KDA one and rebuilding the NAR. Maybe that was actually just correct. Because also not having that super fan, meaning that we don't have this radiant one, right? We're just that much further behind. We won. We won a fight. Was that against the last place guy? Hey, plus one rank. This is a guardian mosher. Can I play it? Trying to find this echo. I think we can still try to dig for this echo. I didn't move my team around. Whoops. Dealing more damage is not actually good. For Echo, it doesn't really do anything. Uh, it's much, much better for these like Mosher type AoE carries. Very good in general, like the metagame, there's a ton of shields going on. What is this guy doing? This guy's got to get outscaled. If we can't win this, then we, we got, I mean, we already know we got big problems, but these guys might just end up fighting each other and never dying. But I think the extra, the extra damage here from the Twisted Fate is going to be enough. GG. GG. Oh my gosh. I guess we just don't force, guys. Just don't force. Don't force. Don't force. Because even, what did we have? We had the gem. And was it collector was the other one? I feel like I don't have to spend too much to get the content I really want. Oh, strongly disagree. Like this, this uh, thing that they did, this battle pass, only 30 levels and they didn't have a, they don't have a recurring thing, right? Like getting these, great. But normally you also have a recurring thing that'll help you to get like every, every hundred uh, points, get an extra 50 shards, right? Something like that, which is what you want. You want people to dig to open the thing that they want and then they get it. But these are these got devalued so much now that you have now that you have whatever, you know, chibi thing is already leveled up, right? The the pedals don't really do anything. All right, we're done forcing. Time to play flexibly. And actually still try to do well we're going to 
Always have a headliner. What are, what are some of the lessons? If you don't have a headliner, you're going to lost streak. It's going to hurt hard. Reaching for units, often a bad idea. You just kind of have to roll with what you get, build out this set more than ever, right? You just have to find some strong synergy and roll with it. And I'm spending so much time trying to like figure out what to build, what to do that I'm not even scouting, I'm not repositioning, I'm not doing anything. We can do better. Oh no. No, it's all Emerald. All right, we're, never mind, we're good. I bet we're down to Emerald 3 now, right? Could be streamer diff, honestly. <laughs> you know, like that happens. Uh, this is very random. Three cost champion, very, very snowball -y. The reason I'm going to go for it is because by scouting what everyone gets as their three cost champion, you have a good idea what they might try to build towards. And if you know what they're going to build towards, you have a better idea of seeing what's open. And then you can read the room. Loaded carousels. So lost streaking is a little bit better. True damage is a little bit better. Teams with two two tanks, two carries, a little bit better. Because you get three extra items, right? Just, that's one of the other things that happens. Three extra items. Yep, this guy's 4 emo already. So actually that's a great spot for us. We can still put country on the menu. anyone has done suggests that we can't go for jacks oh beautiful okay Thing we're missing is this. Maybe maybe we should have put this in over the second Samira. I do want to win. <clears throat> I don't think I would have had a problem beating this guy, but pre-level no do we go five do mm. uh, thank you very much and that's a sentinel headliner This guy wants to pivot. Let's try to get that guy to look.
You know what? Maybe wind streaking is actually better on loaded carousels. Like you're less likely to find like the best one might be that much better, but it does even out over to over effects, right? Because you're adding, you have champion plus item. Now it's champion item and item. Less likely that you get that like one singular best thing, and more likely that you have things that are good. All right, this is Bruiser Mosher, which is actually better. Not not completely better, but enough so that we can sell out. Maybe we even sell this Samira to get to 20, or maybe we just pre-level. I'm not positive I've made the right choice here. Hopefully this guy sees me and uh, we'll just do a little bit of this. Sets punch goes across the map. Holy shit. Suddenly I do think he can carry. I'm not selling the Samira while, while this guy's in my face. Instead I'll just pre-level. Actually, since I'm a higher level than him as well, I'm going to buy this. Take another three out of the shop. <clears throat> make it more likely that threes hit. It's, you know, a tiny bit, but this stuff adds up. And you look, there's 13 champions. Let's say you're rolling down and you grab four of them two stars, right? That's 12 out of the pool. The pool that only has, what, 100, 134, 234 total champions, right? If you take out 12, that's a big chunk. That's 5%. All right, we want crit more than anything. This is an infinity edge. We don't get it. That's fine. Uh, Bloodthirster. Country Crowd Diver. We get to go immediately crunchy right here. Yes, please. gonna hide her up front don't mind if I do not moving he is moving okay he waited makes sense stick his tank right in front of my butt make it impossible to go through him make him deal damage to my fronts oh no we fell we fell behind early on this board set doesn't get second cast off we might have problems this can be a close one these rapid fires are stacking up samir's gonna have to one shot there we go we're good we made it Never had a doubt.
this. We know what to do. We just need some crit. He's coming from behind. Uh oh. Gonna carry Samira. The spell's coming too late. You're gonna get. There's no stun here. Should be able to chew through these guys though. With the healing. No. <laughs> Definitely lost by the unit that we could have put in play. That's too bad. I got out of country. Good. Good, good. Uh, we don't mind losing again. Eh, do we... This level gives us a chance of beating this guy that's on a win streak, who greatly reduces his chances of carrying the game 100 to 0, but I think he's just stronger than us. It's gonna be close. It would suck if I lose this because 39 means I'm gonna have to sell the set to, to keep my uh, team alive. Corky shouldn't one shot here, so I should be okay to win this. Especially with Hand of Justice healing back up. Got him. He's gonna start moving into like Edgelord. These are really, really good Viego items. Could go Crowd Diver frontline. All right, good, easy win. We really wanted this easy win. Make sure that we get up to 50. Both of these wins were so clutch to not have to give up extra units. As soon as we find a Thresh or, or another country unit, we can go ahead and sell the Katarina, especially if we find the um, Samira. Depending on what Samira we find, it's gonna change everything though. If it's Executioner, then maybe we go for one of the other builds. Hello. This would be quite strong. This would be, this would be Biss, actually. This Ari is like actually perfect for us. But it looks like we're not getting it. That guy missed. All right, here we go. I 
I have different tech lined up. Such a big damage spike when you get these two items. Plus 16, plus 8, and plus 8, right? Like, it's either plus 16 or you actually have an extra 4%, you know, an extra. Right, you either. It might be 16.4. 8% on 8%. Yeah. 0 0.064 or 0 0.64. So this isn't working. The nearest ally. Oh my god, does this go? Is this two sided? Like, does this give it to them too? The nearest ally with open slots receives the temporary copy? Oh my gosh, if that's the way this has been working this whole time, then I just suck and I've never realized it. Playing the guys that are way down here. Level seven, rank ones, rank ones. That guy's a little bit scarier. I think we're still good enough to win these fights. No need to reach. Although we don't have that many two stars either, so you know I can't can't necessarily say that our team was that much better. Really like this set though. By get by putting the armor shred right there, it means that we can put uh, steadfast on. What's his face? All right, so let's look. If we kill this guy, all right, that guy didn't. No one got a shield. This this does not do what it says it's what it said it does. Whenever a champion, it must be my own champion. It is definitely not working on on their units, and it's definitely not doing anything for them. So this is just worded wrong. I'm just gonna report report a bug after. Alright, let's start maneuvering a little bit. Could actually just go Giant Slayer here and go for more carry. Carry potential could wait for the items. Might want to exist in a world where I go eight here. Let's try to get a little bit stronger. This guy's weak, free win. This guy's still holding his country, Tom Kench. Because there's other worlds right here. Like, these items are so perfect for this comp. I can do... It's almost too good, right? Because Giant Slayer, fantastic. Chewing through Frontline, fantastic. All, all of the things that, that you need to do. You can also build into... Like Titans for and have a sword for what's his face for Urgot. Red buff can go red buff right here. Actually, I kind of love red buff. Oh, that's the question I was asking. Do we pick up an echo right here? I think the answer is yes. It costs us a gold to do it, but it takes it off, takes it out of the out of the spectrum. 
and it's going to improve our odds all game. This, uh, this is backwards. I want my set over here. This guy went eight and he's a little bit strong. I think we're okay. I really, really want this to be steadfast because it has steadfast heart has crit chance on it. And by going this plus Hand of Justice, that's my tech against all the Akali players and Karthus players. Although there's way fewer of them out there now than there used to be. That tech <clears throat> means that you never die to backline, backline threat, right? You just you actually just win the fight against the Akali because you're full health, so you take reduced damage. Then you have resistances, you take less damage, and then you're healing back up while maintaining the high crit chance. Still not all start up. Will be the last one. One more, one of us. Wait, Nasty Mash also went? No, this is the same guy. Country. He's trying to bike. <clears throat> How is he still win streaking with such an inferior team? Never mind. Kane's just going to get there. He went eight. Gross. I guess I should answer that question now. Why is this doing well? Six country? Is he going for another one? He is playing a random ass this. Even though this is Biss on Urgot. Speaking of Biss. I want this crit. I want this crit. Alright. Deathblade, 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 Deathblade. I guess it's Deathblade and the extra damage, but she, I'm not a huge fan. Maybe this Deathblade can go on the uh, on the Urgot, but there's there's never going to be enough Urgots here. Rolling right now feels like a bit of a trap. We'll just have to position ourselves slightly better. We're going to go like this, make sure that we're still winning. Could have gone Deathblade on the Urgot. Actually, maybe you should, still should have. See, this guy did the smart Oh, is he starting to transition finally? York is out of the pool. Two Yorks are out of the pool, which means my my cap goes down. This has got to swap in, right? No, he's just selling it. <clears throat> is he finally putting it on the Argot? No, he put it on Samira. Ooh. That guy like one shot my whole front line and my back line. Yowza. All right, I think it's time to sell the Katarina. Can find another country unit. Go eight and find any of the threes.
Maybe this guy's just way smarter than me. You play you play a board and you do it all the all the way through stage four. You're like, yeah, my team's still good, still good. No need to change. That's what I that's what I tend to do. I try, I tend to leave before my team's ready to do it. Right? You almost like build a backup team ready to roll. Country, and she's almost there already too. Got her. It's a first. Lazy should have bought some more threes there. I also have two sets in play. Guy, that guy's sitting on eight echoes. What a chum. This guy's got seven vexes. Let's take these, put those back in the pool. We don't need them as much. Could just play this, by the way. Still sitting on country. And he shot. Oh, he went all in. He went all in and he failed. He went all in and he stayed with this? Okay. Hey, you know what? Everybody's got different strengths. This jacks right here, we need to target it. So let's target it like this. Everybody's putting that beefcake right in the middle. We're gonna try to rip right through it. Oh gosh, it actually be on the left by one. Steadfast. This is a great, great, great Vex item. You know what? We're gonna go Bloodthirster because of the parting gifts. We're gonna go Bloodthirster, throw it over here on the on the Thresh, and hope to pass it along. May actually, you know what? Maybe we just put it right here on the Amumu. Have it die more often. Three Argots. He finally sold the thing. And is Ezreal. What is he going for? Oh, he found the big shot. He found this. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. This guy's six moshers. What's it? Is he sitting on Argots too? No Argots. He did it without Argot. Okay, and those are the four players left. So you know what? One, once Nasty Mash sells these Urgots, we can go. We can go ham. We can go the rest of the way in on this. Oh my gosh! What a big hit! Oh my gosh! Red buff. Be enough. Stun. Oh! 
<laughs> what was that damage? What was that damage? Nasty match. Did you sell your Urgots? All right, you know what? There's, en there's enough in the pool now for me to go after. Oh, I kind of like these poppies. Do I go poppy? Extra mosher? Eight? Hmm. Extra frontline? I don't have enough gold for it. And I never put this in play. My goodness, how, how silly am I? All right, these are all two-star. Country's OP, folks. I didn't even play well, and here we are. We're doing okay. We need to kill this Ezreal, though. This guy is a problem. Nasher's Tooth doesn't actually do anything on this guy. Bonus attack speed and extra attack damage. Okay. Still, we still have a Thresh to upgrade, and then we've got either of these units that we could hit. Gonna be hard to hit either. Oh, well, we also have to defend against the locks, huh? This is this is smart. They focus on one side so that the Ezreal can keep on going across. It wastes my time over here, spending any amount of time. But if I can get Samira to target this dude, then I'm in okay shape. Nope, I'm just gonna get one shot. We are so close to our units. Guy hit his Lux. We want to kill this Zed real fast. We want to kill that Jax really fast is what we want to do. This should, uh, bookends. I mean, we should be a bookend here. Jack's moved over to the corner. Is he just doing this every single time? That would suck if that were true. Maybe we can stun lock. We're got taken way too much damage way too soon. Yes, we got the kill. Okay. That's big threat number one. It looks like he swapped to, to Lux. That's actually a mistake. You can do it. Now that it's three star Lux, it is like enough damage, but it's pretty close. Maybe it's going to be just enough anyways. Yeah, it's enough. Okay. How do we do better than top three here? We have to lock this. No, we have to sell this and unlock it. Speaking of being close, this guy's holding sets. Maybe we can just get rid of the set. As a two-star York, that's gonna face tank everything. We also have Samira on the opposite side of the board from this set, which is no good. If we hit these, we're gonna finish first, but we still might not hit these. Also, we could just finish second by having the better, like, board overall. Tank items, redemption. 
try to survive this front line. We could also just put this in play. Actually, putting into play is not a bad idea. This keep it, keeping these small guys alive is a mistake. Redemption should be next to the set. <clears throat> this Jin's stacking up. He's blocking his own units here. Still not enough. Down to two. Got one of them. Couldn't find the Vex. Got CC for the for this guy. Nice, he's locked up. Jax bursted down. Boom. There's one. This guy got stunned. All right, we're gonna win this fight for real. Burgot's doing work. Beautiful, clean, clean win. Block against Jin and Alawi. Jin Alawi. If we play, if we got a York, I suppose we'd we'd play it. Jin Alawi find Vex. Jin Alawi find Vex. Be ready for like one extra unit. Did I skip a three star Urgot? That would totally would have been a mistake because I was definitely looking for it for a long time. Oh, I had it with the uh, with the. Masha, right? But mm, Viego might have been worth considering there, actually, if we do hit this. Kiana's also probably Kiana's even better. Wunderbar. All right, what's our other unit? Two rounds before I got it, I missed it. Well, that's my fault. Uh, what do I want? What do I want? Crit. Boom. Damage. Uh, grab it. Okay, we've got a chance. We've three-starred everybody. That's worth three. I mean, Amumu, if you get him as a headliner, can be fine. This should be enough to do fine here, though. That guy's gonna one-shot my Vex. Nope, gets stunned. All right, one down. This guy hasn't lost. This is the guy that's held on to that to country Tom Kench for the entire game. I did crush him last time. Uh, what one better unit? This is better. actually want this over here again I, I want my items I should have wanted my items bookended but redemption being between the two main tanks is definitely much better he did swap his team around so we're gonna go right to left on both boards that should be good for this AoE to be hitting but that might empower his Ezreal to cast spells more often which might not be the best for me also I'm gonna get capped out on these items the Samira burst is not gonna be enough he got me He got me. So I saw one of the Urgots that was a Masha Urgot. 
and it was um the headliner but i wouldn't have wanted to sell my samira i don't know if that's the one that we were looking at gotta stretch out after that one that was kind of sweaty turns out that guy played just enough defense Right? Like, that's one of the elements that we talk about in Magic. The Gathering especially. Taking out, you know, a hate draft is a powerful tool. That game we took the Echo, you know, that, that affected our spending power. It might have slowed us down. But while we had the Echo, we were sitting on six copies of our, of our characters. So we weren't really close to hitting. If we wanted to be close to hitting, then we could sell it and go shop and go all in. And eventually we did that. But... Holding other people off of Echoes, it's really tough to see what the value is. I could I could check the um the VOD, but I had I mean it would have lit up, so I don't know. It would it would have been tough to miss, but that said, you know, stressful situations, people make mistakes all the time. That is certainly within the realm of possibilities. Can you see me or am I too far down though? There we go. Is something I have to do ever since hip surgery. My hip flexors never really got their range of motion fully back. So I have to stretch them out like this, which is good. It gives me like a little squat, a little quad and glute exercise too. No, in fact, TFT. I've been more recently into TFT because I love this set. I think this set's absolutely fantastic. I think it is a legacy piece. They did fantastic with it, with the music and everything, uh, especially. I wish True Damage and Heartsteel had better soundtracks, but apart from that, everything else is great. And it's just tons of fun. And Vegas, Vegas was such a triumphant success, right? It was like a renaissance of, of esports. And it's the best uh, best event that they've put together for TFT. It was absolutely such a good time. So kind of just riding the wave, especially since League of Legends is in the middle of preseason. You know, it's starting to make big swaps. They don't really care about balance so much anymore. They're just going to put a lot of fan favorite champions like Riven, Velkaz, Brand. They're just going to give them some buffs so that people can have a good time playing. All right, I think we've got an idea what we're starting with. Personally only playing League, yeah, so League is what we do 99% of the time. And it's what we coach most. Um, the elements of TFT, I'm confident in knowing the elements, but my, you know, my hand's doing this, and for some reason, this happens. I don't know what setting it is. I've tried, I've literally tried changing every setting on my computer, and I cannot get that to not happen and it means that moving units quickly is impossible for me so it may be that i'm just somewhat capped on how good i'll ever be at this game if if i can't figure out what does that so i i can try double clicking but again this is way slower and the only thing i can think of is like if you stay on the square long enough for this animation to happen and then throw it over this is sort of like the cap of how good you can, you how quick you can be. There might just be a world where I'm, I'm ahead of that, you know. Level up is really, really. Oh, cruel pact. All right, we said we said we would take cruel pact. Let's see if anyone else is in cruel pact. You know what? Fuck it. We're just gonna take it anyways, and we'll make the most of it later. Uh, emo spellweaver is not really a team that we want to go for. We can go like this. We get Sentinel plus bonuses. All right, did anyone else go Cruel Pact or do we free win? All right, so we've got the free wins.
The question is, what else do we want to build here? So leveling, anytime someone has Cruel Pact, you basically don't want to level because you're not going to get that win streak. Or you, you can't like anticipate on a win streak. You can try to beat most of the field most of the way. Um, it also means one of the good things about Cruel Pact is I don't need to spend any of my money here or, or spend any of my resources. So I'm gonna buy a one a one star team, make sure that I'm good enough to keep my win streak. I'm gonna win these two, then go to level seven. And then I'm gonna go and try to find my headliner. There's three teams that I'm very comfortable playing here. Uh, you can do, well, really four. There's the Sentinel team that we built up earlier. There's Country, which is like the very easy stock standard one that people will do. EDM is also fantastic. It's like 32 HP right now. I'd have to roll eight times. I have 48 health to spend. I can do it. Whether or not I should. We're going to slam this. Just try to spike this damage as hard as possible. And, uh, you know, with cheap units, this should make it pretty easy for us to find the guy that we want. And if we find it, then we're great. Like, I could even pick this bard up, just have this Jazz Dazzler guy go for, like, a uh, Misfortune Kaisa type board, and I'd be totally strong enough. But option B is sell these, actually start accruing interest. I should win streak this one for free, just being seven units versus four. Although, this is kind of close, not gonna lie. Uh... Uh... Uh, if I lose here, I lose. I die. Oh, I died! <laughs> oh my, against a guy that hasn't even, oh no, he did cybernetic bulk, all right. Oh my gosh. We'll put this in chat, oh my gosh. So I said I was gonna win for free, don't need a headliner. Look at this guy's board. This is how strong this unit is, by the way. A little bit, a little, just one round of getting the stats up. His 8-bit is already at level 2, which is not that much. Um, headliner, quirky, is strong. <laughs> that guy doesn't even have a great board. He's big shot, so he has like pretty good synergies and cybernetic bulk. This guy just loses, just like it's nothing. My gosh. Okay, maybe that's a sign. Maybe that's a sign to get out. Woo! How much are we gonna lose, like 45? Mm. Mm. It's, it may not even tell me how much I lost until after Krugs, because it doesn't. It does. It may not even give me credit for a game, because TFT for a long time only gave you credit for a game if you made it um, through to Krugs. <sighs> Gotta take a deep breath. How is my league climb going? Yeah, let's let's change gears. I gotta shake this one off. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Emerald 3-0 LP. I definitely lost all my points there. <laughs> I take pride in killing people that take Cruel Pact because sometimes they make a mistake like that. And you just like spike a level five board quickly. You're just like, might maybe I'll play them. You know, cross your fingers that you play them before they start healing up. My hands are actually sweaty. As far as a league climb, I don't really climb. I do enjoy playing ranked, and I do like ranking up. But to climb, I would play one trick trundle or one trick jungler. That's not how I enjoy playing the game. So I like to play variety, although recently I've kind of held myself down to just five champions within each role. And mostly with Phil, I end up with just three rolls. So naturally that is going to allow me to climb a little bit better. So it's going all right. I think I'm in like plat two or something, but we expect to go into diamond. Where are we at? An unexpected error occurred. Yeah, it thinks that I'm still in a game of TFT. <laughs> it literally thinks I'm still in a game of teamfight tactics. So 
Sometimes you just get a sign it's not your day. We did get a pretty good night's sleep last night. The, um, tried a stronger dose of my THC last night, so I used THC and CBD to relieve joint pain. And I was someone that was completely against it. Go completely. And then, yeah, see, it's trying to reconnect me to this game. It thinks that I left. Okay, I finally get to leave. Hopefully, maybe. But that's why it wouldn't let me join into that next game. It's, it's still, it still might think that I'm still in this game. But, uh, yeah, the upside was that I got to bed really early. <laughs> it, it knocked me out pretty quick. So I had a good night's sleep. Attempt to join Q fit. Yeah, it literally thinks I'm still in that Team Fight Tactics game. It's like, no, 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 dog, you didn't lose. Bug. Report a bug. You play support, 150 LP, peaked at 400. That's sick, dude. I actually just uh, just coached a mass, well, like a high diamond one player. Um, has made masters, has reached masters, but that's the their height. We went over some some things yesterday. I just uploaded the video yesterday, although I may have it on set on private. But uh, those are the things that we normally do here. We try to help people that are at about that rank that are trying to crest into pro play or organized play right because solo queue and pro are, are so different they're completely different games and so you have to you have to know these things to be able to move into those upper echelons or, and to move into competitive right because it changes in solo queue it's very much about number one you just got to play you have to do the thing that you can do because you can't rely on anybody else uh you can make the right play over time especially if you're top 100 uh, you can just make the right play, and most people in the top thousand or so tend to know more or less what's going on, but still, it's ingrained in their brain. What do I do to get gold next? This is normally the stage after Krugs when you should be able to get out of a game, so maybe it'll finally let me free. Alright, you know what, we're gonna, we're gonna watch a video about TFT while I- well, I'm gonna see if it lets me load in. Does this say processing? It still says processing. My goodness. I may, I may just be stuck here. You probably ask yourself a question like let's try, let's try to learn something. does the headliner mechanic work? Why can't I find the unit that I'm looking for? And does selling my headliner even make a difference? In this video, I will try my best to explain the headliner mechanic in detail. Did so yeah, I, I mean bugged. It's literally I'm literally held hostage. It's just ridiculous. Parts uh, with all zeros on OptiG. Oh, EU West. Where are you hollering from? We're, we're in Europe. It's uh, nighttime over there. Not this. Denmark? There's a lot of good gamers in Denmark. Strong, strong uh, heritage. Just, uh, what is it? Strong gamer culture? Or are you just naturally more talented there? There we go, I found it. I had to put the, the tag in.
keeping your deaths low that's a very good sign good win rate on your on your main champions that's fantastic good spectrum too good against good against dive good when you need to dive good peel you got like a good mix is this would you say that Tarek's your main like above everything or you just find yourself playing Tarek more often than not Renat, Renata is one of those champions. Big difference between organized play and solo queue. The power on her W is just infinitely better in organized than it is elsewhere. Yorick. Wow. Mm. You just see so many Nautilus players. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so good. You, you basically lose when you go into the Tarek. That's the rule, right? They come to you, you win. That's that's how Tarek works. If you have to reach to get to them, you lose. You just don't have reach. But anytime that fights come to you, Tarek is the paramount champion in the entire game, right? So like for I mean for every role, you have different characters who are best in those situations. But without a doubt, like someone like Darius, for example, really good from top lane. You can even play him in the jungle if they're playing dive, right? They play dive, and you're like, sweet, I'm a juggernaut. I hold space. I'm great set. Same thing. Uh, but from support and across all roles, Tarek is number one in the game at that. You guys want to come to us? You have to, you're have you committing a tool like a Nocturne Ultimate or a Nautilus Q that ju jumps into my team? Like, boom. Tarek ult, put up the shields, start going. Let's start hitting. Boom, boom, heal. Boom, boom, heal, right? Not to mention that the itemization is really good for him recently. Let me, let me see one of the games where you played. What happened in an L? 2-18. Nautilus, Instalock. Okay. A lot of long range. They they can actually play from at range. Three range characters, not optimal. Uh or even Orin doesn't really need to join the fight. So this is like the the lesser side of the Nautilus, but you can easily pick up into this. Aurelia has a really tough time into this composition, although he can steamroll the Aurelian soul. Once you get into a team fight, there's so many people that can lock her down. That becomes tough. Yeah, th this is just a tough a tough game to build around, right? Like, you want a Wombo, they want a Wombo. They Wombo better than you. They've got more AoE with a soul and Fiddlesticks. You guys have more knockup, but, like, they just deal so much damage in that same area. Radiant Virtue so strong. This item so strong. Do you go, do you go Frozen Heart a lot? Probably not. I'm obviously not this game, but... Without the double two two long range mages, I absolutely love Radiant Virtue into Fimble Winter into Frozen Heart for him. All right, let's see. Am I allowed to play again? No one respects Terra healing and damage. Yeah, I, that's the thing. They don't really understand it because it's not really apparent what's happening in the game. But if Terek gets to auto attack, he wins the fight. Like. That's almost just a rule. And just You can almost put that in the same category as don't chase Singed. It's don't dive into Taric. Because every auto attack, you're talking about extra stuns. You're talking about extra heals. The fact that his attack is empowered, right? So you get to hit extra hard going into those fights. But you certainly would rather it be a 3 AD, 1 AP comp. Uh, that's, that's the very best situation, right? Nocturne. Nocturne Riven, right? Like, no they play Nocturne Riven, Tarek is like, mm, free low. Makes sense. Yeah, Locket or Radiant. Just something to keep your team a little bit alive. Radiant Virtue is so, such a strong synergy with, with what you're trying to do anyways. All right, we have a Yumi, so maybe we'll go Kane, maybe we'll go Nocturne. We played a great Kane game earlier, and then our team started falling apart mentally for no good reason. We had a tremendous lead, and yet we had a Doomer, and it it certainly ended up tilting me. I didn't think it was, and then I made like the simplest mistake, something that's in my brain, which is don't go bot lane when Baron is up. I did that, right? Inexplicably bad. So it's sometimes the world, you don't realize how, how tilt affects you until it affects you. And so I want that back. I want my game back.
you're experiencing with graves one tricking on your smurf how come graves why why you choose graves See, Ash, those are the things that you don't want to say. It's fine, I'll go mid. See, for example, if you want to climb, this is a dodge. Although, you know, some people turn on, right? About 3% of people, when they get aggravated, they just, like, reach a whole nother level. And it goes, you know, there, there are people that definitely play better in that world. Most t cases, that is not what's happening. And so when you want to climb, you see this. GG, go next, and you're, you're going to be okay. Uh, let's see. We've got Zach Yasuo with no other... I, you know, I can go Red Cane and get a knockup. We've got Vayne... Is this guy just going to troll, though? I don't know. I wanted a challenge. I also like playing a more aggressive play style. Yeah, that's sick. Uh, let's see. Do I want to flash here? Do I want to ignite here? We have a Warwick. I think I just want to be able to get away from the guy. Also trying to get a feeling for the carry aspect of League since I only play support for so long. Yeah, that's a great way of doing it. I mean, you can also... Uh, so you're in EU West. Um, do you know who Alois is? Alois NL. He's a he's a top Riven main. Uh, you could call him a one-trick, but he's recently doing a series on getting every top laner to Masters. So he's v just a very, very good player. Has very strong fundamentals. He'll tell you as much. That is the one thing that he parrots all day long, which is... I just have good fundamentals. He also has extremely good mechanics. But with good top lane fundamentals, like you can carry the way that he plays, right? Very, very self-sufficient. Just make a plan based on what's happening around you, where the ebbs and flows of tempo are going and how to mitigate your own downtime while maximizing your uptime. The knowing what he knows is a fantastic way to, to go through the game. All right, let me see. I'm going to go red cane this game, so I'm going to actually do this one. You saw him on YouTube, yeah. Yeah, he, he's a he's a fa fantastic content creator. Everything that he says is great for top lane. It's great for solo side lane in general. Okay, you know what? We're just gonna do this. I don't I don't need to be tilted by whatever they're saying. I know that I do get tilted. Despite having all the techniques available to me, it still happens. But yeah, every everything he says is basically spot on. There, there are a couple small things for solo queue, I should say. For solo queue, spot on. In, in pro play, for organized play, there's a lot of elements that work and a lot of elements that need change uh, or need like adjustment, I should say. Oops, too far, too far. My speed clear is done. No more speed clears. I 
I may have messed this up. Oh yeah, I messed it up. Yep, it's true. That one little stutter. Bot lane three camp. He's just got blue, which means I get to take his camp. I'm gonna go take red since he has such a miserable time on raptors anyways. Oh, he came straight up here. That might be a problem for me. He's going gank to gank. He's crazy. Nice. That's so good for me that he's that he failed that. I could actually take his raptors too. Because it's so free, so fast for me. But um, I actually want this guy to have ex uh, really bad respawn timers. Oh, I'll move that. Yep, you're right. That is a TFT thing. Excuse me for that, that was a mistake. Lost a couple seconds, but it's no big deal. Wave's okay. <clears throat> They're gonna go for dragon right here. I don't have my respawns except for my wolves that I never took. Oh, did I really never take those? That's not good. So I skipped over. Oh, didn't I take wolves first? They take dragons, no big deal. He's on 24 CS. Pushing out, that's a really big problem. As long as this 24 came with a golems into raptors, then he'll the respawn will be up. No, so he did it later. Maybe I can get behind one of them. Might have been worth flashing here. This guy doesn't have his timer yet. This is good for me. Well, no, it's not. I lied. I pretend like I'm walking away, but I'm actually going to go fight this guy for it. Foolish. Completely foolish. I saw the guy coming over from the top side. 
didn't react well to it at all. Completely, completely bad. All right, how do we get out of this? We can just continue to outfarm this guy. He's going to be stronger than me in these fights. They clearly had some sort of vision somewhere. There must have been a ward right here because I just dropped this in there. I cleared it out, right? So most likely it's right there. guy was two and two and he had a shutdown I need to focus I'm not playing well Yeah, 100%. <clears throat> Okay. I don't know what that was. I couldn't cast my spell. Try to bait this guy. They're going for dragon, means I get to take this. Now I'm still marked by the Warwick. He's coming coming for me. Just wasted my smite. Not the best play available, not even close. Oh, we need to start playing more towards this Ash. This Ash brought a, brought a game.
Warwick was bot side. We might get lucky and steal a camp here. That guy is a much better player than I am. That guy was moving at a speed that I am not <clears throat> comfortable with. Fairly normal for Akali players though, right? Oh, we just need to do that better. But you know what? I was playing poorly at TFT. I might just be a little bit slow today. That guy felt like he was moving twice as fast as I was. He didn't, uh, didn't even have upgraded boots. I was thinking about Stridebreaker because they have Vayne, uh, but Ash is huge, so Ash should be good enough at slowing them down. Uh, plus, we have Zaki also, so we actually have enough lockdown where I think I just want to be able to be the tankiest version of me I can be. I could have gotten my R off if I if I had smite R. That's something that if if you're a one trick, you'll you know about. Leave these for the Ash. She scales the most with the gold, so you give it to her. Oh, you also was coming. All right. We'll take the aggro. Also made a mistake not dropping this Herald in time. Just gonna deal some permanent damage here. Lux needs to be really careful. I've got my transformation in base, so I'm going to go take it. Maybe we just clear this quadrant first. This guy needs to be very, very careful of what's on that side. I forgot I have Deafen on. They full of evac. Oh no, they're going after Yasuo. I need to go save this guy. I don't have my ev evolution. This is so. This is so empty. I need to recall. Don't do it. Oh my gosh, don't do it. I'm just gonna ping him off. I'm. I am hard leaving. Why did they do that? I don't know why I did that. Yep, 
yeah, missed plates with the Herald. Big, big whoopsie. But you know what? That's streamer debuff. That sort of stuff happens. When I'm talking, especially to me, right? I'm talking, I'm less comfortable with it. I'm already moving a little bit slower than most people. I need to be more efficient with my camps, I don't doubt it. I appreciate having someone high level in, in the chat, you know? You can call me out on the, on the inaccuracies. Can't fight this. That was all bait. All right, that's dead. <clears throat> chunked we can do baron we can do baron oh ash is fighting the guy how do you end okay <clears throat> can't do it anymore this is a position don't ever want to be alone there as an 80 carry I should probably want control ward here. I'm gonna try to play off the momentum of Warwick not having it. I just want the extra stats. It's a dangerous fight, but a good one for us. Zach plus Yasuo. And Yasuo is gonna have his ultimate up now. Oh, Yasuo is still going ham. Got 1v3. Chain CC. Got him. Worth. See, I feel good about myself right now. Now we push this. A broken inhibitor should be enough momentum to be able to hold on to a Baron Siege. Just gonna peel here. Watch out, you don't, why, all right, so Zach, you can't be putting your E on cooldown, man. No, 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 Oh my gosh, this is so inty. Lux holding down the fort. Guys. This is one of those times where I'm not going to let my team make the bad call.
Got them both. So like right there, if you try to go for Baron, they're coming back out. They all are, they all shopped, and they got better tempo coming out. The only person who's feeling full right there, the only person who's feeling full is the Osro because he left and teleported back in, right? So it's absolutely mandatory that you go and you help the team get out, you pull back out. That was like a game-changing play that the team was able to pull off of Baron. Then they trickle in and you can take the fight and that's okay, but you have to be able to make that play. If you're in you know pro play or an organized play you can create that where you come out there you create the wedge that goes in and defends i'm actually going to go review this uh and see and see what we're talking about this guy you know let's give state cool to the lux uh, i think more it looked like warwick mental boomed when warwick went side to side and then came back and was missing camps and then stopped getting anything done i think he lost a lot of a lot of his oomph This will be the last thing we do because I got to go pick up my kiddos. The first clear, it's uh, it's very, it's actually very common. It's Raptors Krugs into red. Then you use your E to go off, although I missed it going across. I had that one stutter step that moved me backwards, which was enough to miss my timing to make it all the way through the wall. So I'll, I'll show that really quick. For some reason, it's easier on, on red side because you can get up right up against the wall, but what I should have been doing is holding spacebar right away to make sure that none of my clicks go backwards because when you click in there, if you click and you're right next to it, you'll first step back to try to get all the way around. I'll show that in a second. I'll just do this in uh, double time. So you take this, you move the camp towards your next one. Here, let's just do it like this. Went a little bit too far on that. So you take this camp, you try to move it over. Anytime that you can, you use your Q against the wall so you get a faster thing. And you should be able to make it all the way through this. All right, by making it through that wall, and you can make it out of your camps very, very quickly. Now right here, this is where I change things up. Normally you just go, take this, take this. You're out by 325, 326. Uh, maybe since I missed, I'd probably be two seconds later, but still before scuttle, I'd be okay. But because this guy showed and went for that gank bottom, I wanted to take away his most impactful camp. Warwick without red buff is a completely different champion because levels three through five, he's relying on red buff to make those plays for himself. Now he went straight from bottom to mid. Some people would recall from this position, but this way he gets a little bit of extra action here. He also gets the kill. It's really a trade-off. So then Warwick has to decide what to do with this wave. So my question for you guys, hashtag strat chat, what do you do with this wave as a Warwick? Let's turn on the red vision. You know that you blue side cleared. You assume that the cane red side cleared, although it doesn't look like they had any vision, so they may not know. What? What do you do as Warwick in this situation? Do you touch this wave? What, what, what happens? So the important things to identify. Number of minions and position of the wave. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven versus six. Also, we have an HP lead and the wave is still in the middle. If it were all the way up, then there'd be a chance that if it were a cannon wave spawning at 230 or reaching the wave at 230 or at four minutes, then it would be able to come back. But in this case, it's already coming back out to a Kali or to a Huey. So even though you've got Huey with no teleport, Huey's gonna be able to pick this up. So you absolutely do not wanna touch this wave. This guy ends up not getting the cyst, no big deal, but correctly, he leaves this behind. This wave goes and you can see it goes a little bit further than you wanted uh, to stick right there. Ultimately, let's go back. Let's see the same wave state and actually make it a correct informed decision based on that seven versus six and the fact that some of these minions, that's what it was. Some of these minions were still attacking Yasuo. They moved their aggro. This E maybe should have been enough. You can come through, you can kill one of these casters to slow this wave down a little bit because of the lack of HP, right? Because you're missing so much HP, this wave actually goes all the way under turret and it ends up forcing way into an awkward spot where now this wave rebounds and since it makes it all the way to the turret, the casters are still outside, but this is not enough to hold a freeze. All right, this is going to bounce out eventually. Yasuo can just shove it all the way in, but this kind of puts Wei in a really awkward spot against Yasuo, who's going to counter him. He's going to be able to get in a lot of good uh, fights from this spot. Now, Warwick ends up going gank to gank. I get away with this. I end up being kind of slow 
on my return. I just take, decide to take Scuttle again because it's Warwick's next best camp after Red. It takes him forever to clear these. So it should give me some time right now. I can anticipate that he's up on Krugs and then I can go through and finish the rest of my clear. And so I get eight camps, right? Rather than six, rather than seven, Warwick's going to be spending less money. Even though he got those ganks off, he's got an inferior position. If we turn back on the toggle right here, as he finishes this camp, he's only just hitting four. I'm four and then some. Right, so you can look, I'm four and 60%, he's four. So I'm up more than a half level. Also, if you look at gold, even though he got that gank off, I'm up 100 gold or 50 gold. So that decision, you have to be very careful about when and where you decide to make a play. Now, that said, that lead is expressed right here. Vayne's got 700 extra gold on Ash. So was it worth it? Yes, absolutely. But now you have to change your mindset. If you're the Warwick in this game, you now have to change your ideas about how this game is played. You now have to play entirely towards Vayne. You shouldn't do anything else except play towards Vayne. And since Vayne is going to hard counter Ash in those 1v1s anyways, you want to continue making as much effort down here. So this is actually a good play. You go off, you take a camp, you take Dragon, you come, you support bot for their play. You can even go take your Gromp. This is fine, he'll be level five. We'll see what he does next. The play should be come straight back down to bot. Use bot as a leverage for Pryo to get into my southern quadrant. And if he can go into this area, then he's going to get something. This little trade-off, what I was thinking as it was happening, hold on, let me go see, because I suspected that they had vision of me, but I'm not positive. Where did they see me, if and where? All right, so they saw that ward. He stepped back and then he came back. So they don't actually see me until I come back in this way, but Akali had already hovered over. Big winner though, Zach gets to win in this situation. Akali should be stronger right here, but this was a little bit inty. I went and I get the camp, but it's still not enough. It's just definitely not worth it. It's giving Warwick resources on this side of the map. The only upside to it is it's gonna give Ash some time on the bottom. They end up winning the 2v2 and Ash wins this anyways. But this kind of speaks to what Warwick should be thinking. If we change this, if we change up the viewpoint, instead of spending any time contesting for raptors versus a cane if you live down bottom maybe you're you're swinging this so this is you can say hindsight's 2020 but remember when i said that you should recall from this point i don't know why we can't see all right there we go let's back up there we go from this point, we said that it should be recall and come back bottom. Use bot prio and the bot lead to go leverage through bottom. Look at this fat shutdown, all right? If you can protect this, you know that our team's looking at this. We're looking to go fetch this and we're gonna make everything possible. Plus we have Lux Ash, which at six is going to be highly lethal anyways. There might be chances where we can go uh, slow into stun, into root, into full burst damage against the vein. If she's able to get her ultimate off, she should always win. But right now, no summoner spells, missing exhaust. This is definitely a vulnerable window. And if you're the Warwick, you want to protect this like it's your egg. All right, you have to be a brood mother. Because let's watch what happens down bottom. They should be risk averse. They're not always going to do it. It is solo queue. They're not always going to do the right play. Coming out right here, this is showing that Vayne is looking to be aggressive. Not something I would necessarily recommend in this spot. You're just trying to withstand, wait for the burst, wait for the push. All right, your wave is going to stack up nicely here. The longer it stays here, the better. Putting Q on cooldown, you know, not necessary. You can get those with the help of the support. So as we approach right here, you should be looking to take no hits. Avoid that, stand in the middle of the minion wave. It's good against both of these champions. So Vayne's already doing herself a little bit of a disfavor by putting herself so far forward. I can tell what she's thinking. She knows she's stronger, right? Let's get off the gold graph and actually go over here. The problem is it's not that much stronger. Yes, it is a lot stronger. Don't get me wrong. 15 attack damage, 30 attack damage versus right here. So 45 versus 20, not close. Plus you've got the move speed, it's not close. It shouldn't be close. However, Lux deals a lot of extra damage and you're letting yourself get chunked. There is a condition where this stops being good for you. Cannon is like an extra champion. So your extra AD, if you take this fight and there's a cannon hitting you, you don't actually necessarily win this all the way. This cannon's a little bit confused. It's just out of range. But now we're going to see the difference between no exhaust, you have no flash. They're going to deal just enough here. 
if Ash has the movement and the wherewithal to dodge this, they just cleanly get this kill and it's no big deal. You never, ever, ever want to take this risk as the vein. You do not do this. And this is why Warwick doesn't need to do this play either. You can come through here. Look at these respawn timers. You know that they're coming up seven minutes into the game. You know these camps are coming up. If instead of going for just two, two camps here, you go for bot prio, and then you say, all right, my team is stronger. Let me start leveraging into here. Instead of jungling this way, you start jungling this way. And that way you're always on the side of the map to protect your biggest asset. Vayne is your win condition. There's no mistake about it. Way is countered by Yasuo. Zack is always going to be useful, even if it's Akali, right? Akali is going to get get wedged late in games is very hard to pilot this champion so this is what you can do differently that's where i'll leave you guys i gotta go pick up the kiddos hopefully you guys enjoyed it thanks for hanging out guys i appreciate the thumbs up and the support i will catch you guys next time we'll be live tomorrow hopefully all day uh in the in the daytime probably 10 a.m to 3 p.m eastern maybe we get a couple chances to do other we do have a meeting with our lawyer so that might take something in but make sure you check out the last video we just did an awesome coaching session from kane much better kane player than me you guys can check out his games and I will catch you guys next time, all right? Keep it surreal. Have a good day. Peace.